go back and do some shit that's some mafia shit. Or they Robert done, De Niro or they've done it and now they're doing a movie about Ro it. Yeah, but that's that's after the fact. Mm -hmm. Robert De Niro ain't shooting nobody. He, he ain't, ain't running no, no, he ain't no gangster. He though. ain't running nothing. He's a he's a Al Pacino ain't either. But they play not, yeah, they all play the gangsters it. in all the yeah. movies. Reservoir yeah. Dogs. You go you go look at all of them. Them you don't believe that that's them. You go see them in real life and one of all. I don't know about y'all, but listening to a song versus listening and watching the movie, the effect is different. Excellent. Not the, for me, bro. The I hear a song out, you know, is it's different. Song. It's different. Hold the words. Hold on, hold on. Hold hey, hold what on. they say? Lucifer was the head of the choir, man. That shit. Man. That shit. That it's shit. It's look, 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 look. What happens when you listen to music? You bob in your head. You are in a state of agreement. You are in relaxation. You understand? I mean, you are taken into the program and it is saying repetitive it is mind control it's it's that maybe for some people what happens when the, i'm listening to music percent. when i'm listening to the music i'm i'm the beat got me first the who the rapper is what they talking about all of that shit don't really matter their rhymes their patterns the the bars the complexity of their bars the, the punch lines you know what i'm saying if a nigga got entendres, double entendres, triple entendres, Lil Wayne be saying some ridiculous shit, but yeah. it doesn't matter. It's how clever he is. It's, I love that shit. Yeah, you know but what that's saying? what I mean by competitive even, even, rap. Even Eminem, bro. Eminem talking about raping mom. I don't know what he's saying, but it's so creative and cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, his and that's versus. that's what I be. That's what so I be. Far. That's what I be. Uh, so entertained by. <laughs> For real. I be entertained by it. And hold on, here's another thing. We all like comedy, right? Yeah, yeah. Comedy be saying some bullshit, right? I mean, shocking things. That's entertainment. We want to hear something that we ain't supposed to hear. <laughs> this is the you only form of genre that doesn't want you to know is entertainment sometimes. And that's why, because they try to sell mm -hmm. it to you as truth and reality. Nah, I think we put that on it. I think we putting that on so, it. So rappers try their hardest a lot of time to say that this is real. And now these young street rappers, a lot of shit they do be real. So yeah. when you talk about drill rap, drill mm -hmm. rap is synonymous that's connected to crimes that actually happen. You understand me? And cats that's really in it. That's the difference. You know what but I mean? I don't, like, I don't think everybody's it's, it's in it like that. A, a actor is support, and a ball player and all the other people, their life starts to go up and transform and take them away from them circumstances more and more and more. But rappers, they believe that the close proximity that they keep make them realer. You understand me? So therefore, they stay connected to things. Well, here's the thing, though. Here's, a, here's, a, here's a, uh, an aspect of it. A lot of these guys, they go and go to the hood and get dudes from the hood to keep them safe. Yeah. So then there's a certain level of authenticity that's placed on them because of their affiliation with motherfuckers that's really real, really doing it. And that's, look, it is what it is, man. Like, civilize the mind, make savage the body. This is the Civil Mind, Savage Body Podcast, and I'm your host, Mike Rasheed King. We will explore and discuss ways to expand consciousness, increase your health, reverse aging, and refine our lifestyles to live a life in an abundance. Now, we're currently aware of three dimensions, but as technology and human intellect advances, consciously tapping into the fourth dimension is inevitable. Three dimensions of space, one dimension of time. That extra dimension is a degree of freedom. However, can we travel back in time? I don't think so. But is that accurate? Or are we looking at this the wrong way? Let's say you wanted to find me, right? You have to know my exact location and you have to know when I'm there. Is time just a construct or is it as natural as the air that we breathe? One thing that I'm certain of is I don't know. I don't believe anything. I either know or I don't know. But hopefully together, we'll all find out. Enjoy the show. All right, now today is a very special episode of Civil Mind, Savage Body because I have two guests. Two really good friends of mine as well, all right? They're both very unique people and very powerful in their community. Ladies and gentlemen, I have Bounty Tank and 19 Keys, all right? Now Tank, he's a good friend of mine, former football player and a very well-known bounty hunter. Now we've seen bounty hunters before like Dog the Bounty Hunter, but he ain't no Tank. Tank is the real deal. Tank got swag, mad intelligent, and he plays a huge role in his community in keeping fugitives off the streets. And he got banging ass music too. He's had a lot of viral success on YouTube with his content and basically you just see this dude kicking down doors, hunting fugitives, taking them to justice. It's crazy. Listen, if you haven't seen his content, do yourself a favor and search Bounty Tank on YouTube and thank me later. Now, we also have 19 Keys, who's also a good friend of mine. He, like myself, is a thought leader. 
He's very forward thinking with tech, Web3, and the stock market. Keys is brilliant. He has a show called High Level Conversations, and he's been having so much viral success on the Earn Your Leisure Network. Earn Your Leisure is mega dope as well. Shout out to them. They're a platform. It's a revolutionary network that shines light on black content creators, entrepreneurs, entertainers, and athletes. Needless to say that today's episode is full of powerful information that, if used properly, will help advance the culture. And listen, these two gentlemen are dropping jewels. Absorb this content, internalize it, and use it to your benefit. All right? Let's enjoy the show. I saw, I didn't see all of it. I just can't watch Foolishness, but I saw some of when he was on um, Joe Buttons. Yeah. Did you see it? Nah, uh, nah, I seen just some of the commercial highlights. I didn't like it. It was kind of goofy. It was like, they trying to press him, talking about he's glor- he's like putting these black kids in danger, these rappers, talking about the lifestyle. I'm like, bro. And, and the guys, one of the guys was like, these are black kids. Da, 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 da. Yeah, they are grown men, but still. Adam said the coolest shit. He's like, should I not? Do they not deserve interviews? You know what I'm saying? Because they were talking about drill rappers. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, but you know, you know how to do it. He says, I ask them about their album and they tell me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I'm like, bro, basically, we was, I think it looked like they was jealous because he's popular. Mm-hmm. He get interviews and he get numbers. And it's like, don't, he kept saying, cause we black and they black and you not black. But I'm like, bro, them white people buy black music in, in, in mass. Yeah. You want them to stop buying black music? Like, come on, bro. I think what would've been, what be better is, you know, you can be mad at the white boy for putting on drill rappers, but they not putting on no positive rappers or no shit. They not putting on the opposite effect. They not creating a culture around it. Mm-hmm. What he doing is he, he a part of creating a culture around drill rap. Mm-hmm. And you know what I mean, that street shit. But the opposite, niggas won't get on the platform. They won't let the drill rappers on, they won't let the positive rappers on. Mm-hmm. So the those who are in this shit don't give a fuck about their voice, cause they saying that if if we rap a different, let's say we rap completely opposite of the drill rap, do I get a Joe Button interview? But I, I haven't seen any rappers on Joe Buttons. What I see is, and y'all correct me if I'm be wrong. I'm watching it, so I, I can't yeah, I don't say I, it. Be correct honest. me if I'm wrong, but you'll see, I don't either, but I see the hype, like when something go viral, go get popular, and I've scanned through. I've never seen a rapper on Joe Buttons. Uh, I just see gossip, like, you know what I'm saying? Just, so you're just saying, I see them talking about everything, like I mean, whatever's I, going I've on in the news. I've seen interview rappers. Like, he had a dope interview back in the day with uh, Lil Baby. You know what I'm saying? I know uh, he's he done stuff for like Nicki Minaj maybe like and big, all the shit names. like that. Be a big name. But but nobody giving the the, the up and coming cats a shot like that. They not. Mm-hmm. I think you know what I mean I think it's it's always truth in there, right? So mm-hmm. you gonna get some truth when your your platform is based on ignorance. Uh and it's based on the street. So you definitely go fan some flames. Mm-hmm. You understand me? That's the nature of it because you know, when you got a platform, people want to see that shit. Yo, mm. you had bro on here, now you need bro on here. You need the opposite side. That's real. So now you giving what's relatively something small, you give it a platform, now you got the streets involved, you got the people involved. Mm. Now with something that could have went away quicker, mm. now it got to become bigger. Now other people mm. want to be actors that participate inside that beef mm. so they can get a name in it too. Right, right, right. Do you think though that, I think it should play out, right? Here's the thing. I think things should happen the way they should happen, right? Just like when you work for National Geographic or Discovery Channel and you out, you know, documenting lions or whatever, you know, they let, they let the gazelles get killed. You know what I'm saying? Cause I, when I was young, I'm like, yo, just tip them off. They're like, nah, let things happen as they may. This is a little bit different because I feel like a lot of people, like look at Lil Baby, for example, right? Lil Baby was a real one. You know what I'm saying? No, no doubt about it. He navigated his way out of his situation into a good situation. And I think that's beautiful. I see so much beauty and what a lot of us have been through, and mm-hmm. co- you know, in terms of like our environments um, and the really strong ones navigate out of it and create, think about, I think the ultimate one we could, we could discuss is like Jay-Z because Jay-Z was a crack dealer. He was a hustler, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And he's a, he's a billionaire who employs thousands of people, you know what I'm saying? So, I love those stories. These are Kennedy stories, you feel me? These are, you know, 
my dad was a bootlegger story, you know what I'm saying? But black, you know? And our celebration, just like there's a celebration of the mafia, you know? Listen, it is what it is. We cannot deny the fact that violence is very attractive and appealing to humans, right? And I think the reason being is because we're violent by nature. Like that's part of our, our coding and our programming. <laughs> However, we have a somewhat civilized society in which we don't really, really need to employ much violence anymore. But when it's being played out for us in entertainment, it's, it's appealing, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and peep this, peep this, peep this. I watched a, a, a little study on a, a white dude's channel on YouTube. He's a, it's a heavy metal channel, right? And he was talking about what happened to heavy metal. Like it used to be the, the top, top dog with music. And he said, gangster, gangster, gangster rap. Mm -hmm. He said the 90s, like West Coast, like when, when rap got hardcore, because heavy metal was hardcore. You know what I mean? That was scary, it was edgy. But it wasn't shit compared to gangster rap. Mm -hmm. Because for one, he didn't say this, but you gotta think about how scary it is how scary to a lot of people it is, in a good way, scary and inspiring for one to be able to communicate properly. But think about communicating crimes and shit from the hood, right? In poetry, rhythmic fashion, uh, entendres, all of these different things in literature that <clears throat> we make look easy, right? And make it cool and make it entertaining. But these powerful men being able to articulate and communicate in a way that most people can never do. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I, I also look at, it's like, you got different genres that people like. Like, we like gangster shit, that's action. That's like an action movie, mm -hmm. you understand me? Then you got the gangster genre in movies, but people watch drama, mm -hmm. uh, people watch comedy, people watch love, people watch thrillers, science, people like sci-fi, all of those different genres, and what we lack is variety. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So it's like, in the culture, we got so much gangster action shit, that's why we give it so much attention. But the reality of it is, is we would probably watch those other genres if we had it on the channels in the first place. Mm -hmm. And the thing with hip hop is <clears throat> they just curate so much of one type of genre, subgenre, inside the umbrella of it, mm -hmm. right? Like take for instance my show. We get a million views on just having a conversation about Africa. Right. Because people are interested in what's going on in the world. Right. Right? Like, but you wouldn't know, like people would be interested in those things unless I create a channel, have a conversation about it. And then people remind us of like, oh shit, I am interested in things outside of what's curated towards me. I gotta give you something. Like, here's the thing though, bro. I think you're not you're not recognizing a certain element though that you have, right? So there's other people that speak about things that you speak about, right? Mm -hmm. But the way that you do it is different. You don't come across as like, I don't know what the term would, you know, the Afrocentric, you know, whatever. You come across as a, a dude from the from the streets, a cool, edgy cat. It's that's, very easy, it's that's, very easy to, that's, to digest. That's intellectual, you know what I'm saying? And that's what, that is way more relatable than somebody, hey, my brother, hey, my sister, yeah, yeah. all right, all right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to the east. Yeah, typical. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not what, people don't want that. I, I Just like, that's that. why, that's why, like there is a lot of there is a variety in hip hop, but nobody likes. But, a but lot look of that at shit. so look at that though. That's a good point though because let's take street cats, not realizing that that edge is appealing, like your mm. story, your background, what you come from, but you haven't learned how to direct that in other areas besides this main one. Yeah, <clears throat> you understand me. And so yeah. what I am is just a representation of yo. I could choose rap. You know what I'm saying? I can choose those things and it'll still be appealing, but I'm taking that energy and I'm pouring it over here. Mm -hmm. And it's the same appeal follows you, right? right so like, that's, yeah. it, that's the problem is there's not enough options on how to express, you understand me, and mm -hmm. be seen. Because listen, we can talk about aliens, we can talk about science, we can talk about history, we can talk about women, we can talk mm -hmm. about the streets, talk about music. It don't matter, all of it's gonna be appealing. 
You understand yeah. me? And I love listening because that relatability is key, especially with somebody who's been through something and they explaining it to you. Correct. It's correct. different than somebody who ain't been through nothing and they mm-hmm. only read everything in the book or only follow somebody else's lead right. and they trying to give you instructions to give you knowledge. Mm-hmm. You're going to much rather want it for somebody who's been through some life that you can relate to personally. Uh, what about you? I, me personally, I don't want guidance from someone who can't who has not been there no. i won't really respect the information just mm-hmm. like in 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 fitness and training you have some coaches that are <clears throat> out of shape i'm like, i'm sorry <laughs> no thanks no thanks you know what i mean you're not qualified how you feel about that do you feel like i feel like i need for a leader to to be of that fabric that he's talking about you, you know what i'm saying you definitely have to relate so i take that same approach into what i do Mm-hmm. I dress street when I'm working. So I'm out in the field, all I do is throw a bulletproof vest on, but they see I got on regular clothes like them. I talk like them. Mm-hmm. They they gravitate towards me and it's easy to connect with them. So it definitely helped when you look like them, you talk like them, you can affect them, you, you, you gotta, can touch them. You have to be other people. There was something that I, I um, the last time I was in college, AKA jail, incarcerated, <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, this was like you dropped out. This was I dropped out at <laughs> <laughs> a scholarship. But this was like I'm out. This was I was at a point to where I had already began my ascension of trying to be a, a more evolved person. So I had to still deal with previous issues. So while I'm in there, you know, the energy initially was like, all right, the black folks was like, that's our spokesperson. I'm like, nah, bro, <laughs> this is y'all shit, right? Mm-hmm. But the other races still came to me, right? Because you know, they see I'm formidable, but they saw I was level-headed, you know what I mean? So, what I recognized was like, it was cats coming to me like old men, bro. Like, I'm in my bunk, just chilling, reading, and they're standing at my door wanting to talk. With They really had nothing to talk about, but they wanted, it was like I was older than them, right? Wanted some, some guidance, and they just asked me anything, you know what I'm saying? I was like, damn, this is so sad. I was sad for them, because I'm like, yo, these men need a counselor in here. And that counselor should be like them. You know what I'm saying? Like they need, I always thought about this. They need a a position of a person, maybe he do a month at a time. You know what I'm saying? They do different dudes in, in the jails that is not an inmate, but look like an inmate, talk right. like an inmate. You know what I'm saying? But he not in there to get people in trouble. He in there to like, cause bro, I would stop wars like over silly shit. Like I'm like, bro, you wanna fight? Cause he called you a bitch? Cause you was cheating? You was cheating, you know what I'm saying? Everybody gonna be on lockdown for two weeks. You want, is it worth it? And they would be like, as if that was some Isaac, I, as I, Isaac. I, I'm I got sorry. Isaac, <laughs> Newton, and Albert. Now, nah, anyway, you know what I'm saying? So they, they thought it, it was if I was giving them like the Fibonacci sequence, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was just very like rudimentary intellect, but they need it though, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They go on, they following this little old lady to chapel. They just doing that to get out their cell. They need somebody in there that they respect, that they know can fuck them up too, but talk to them as they are. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Just, just like kind of off topic, but had a question though. So, Go for it. how, how the culture is so violent right now? Do you fear your own people more than you feel other cultures? You answer that. I personally don't. You don't. You know, I hear that all the time because I, I believe it's all proximity. Mm-hmm. You understand me? It's, it's, it's always what you around. If, if 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 I'm in the redneck South, and they have a string of violent murders or violent behavior that's ramping up, that same question is shit. I got more to fear about them coming to try to do something because I'm in that proximity. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's some crazy white boys swastika up Nazis somewhere doing some crazy neo fashionist shit. I'm not worried about because I'm not in that environment. Mm-hmm. Same situation where it's somebody that's in the hood going on a mission ready to rob somebody, but I'm not in that environment. So for me, it's all about proximity. I don't think it, it, it's never, it like the black and white thing is based on your reality, mm-hmm. right? So like, you know, I told Adam this too. He talking about some, you know, would it be worse in a mixed world or a black or a white world? Like, nah, it's all about proximity worlds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You understand me? So. I live in LA, but I'm not in those environments where those things are happening. And even some people are like, well, they still happen in richer environments. Well, that's still lesser than they happen in the hood. Right. So that's a, the reason that it's such a big news because it's magnified when it happens outside of that normal area where you normally should feel safe. 
statistically, then it happens and everybody like, yo, they even get robbed in Beverly Hills. But they get robbed in the hood every single day. The frequency happens every single day. You only feel danger when what? It gets close to you. You understand me? So if, if we look at the statistics in the hood of America, black men based on our situation should commit more violence mm -hmm. because of what we grow up in. But white men that grow up in, in less of those environments commit more violence. So actually as a people, we not as violent. You understand me? Based on our conditions. Mm -hmm. Like not having a two parent household, growing up in jail or growing up in poverty. Like these are things that prone you to disease, early death, violence, crime. And a lot of black men decide to stir away from it. Mm -hmm. You understand me? It's just that we had more dense population and our circumstances create the reality that most of us live in. So I, I don't know, you know, I grew up in Oakland and St. Louis. So for me to say that, and I've always grew up Oakland, St. Louis, Chicago, LA, you understand me? These are the only places I've ever stayed yeah. in. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not like I, I've been completely out of the way, but I am not in that environment though. So yeah, I think that I don't, I don't fear no issue from my people, but I also put out nothing but good energy for my people. Mm -hmm. I think that when somebody see me, you know, they, they see a beacon, you understand mm -hmm. me, rather than an opportunity. That's a good way to think. So if you out, and you see a say you're in a average average area. Yeah. It's not good, it's not bad. It's just average. Yeah. You got a group of group of black people on one side, mm -hmm. young hoods on, you know, how the young folk do it. You got a group of white people. Do you are you subconsciously what kind of looking what kind, at the black? What, what kind of white threat? people though? What kind yeah, of? that matters. Yeah, true. It's just some, you it's got just this, square Dragon Ball Z bros. Right, yeah, some regular white folks, you know. Uh, but the blacks are like gangbangers. They look, yeah, but they, they look like us. And it, yeah. They, yeah. But don't necessarily mean they're gangbangers, yeah. but they look like it. Yeah. Do you subconsciously feel a threat? Do you go, do you personally, sway tours? Personally, I don't, bro. Mm -hmm. And to answer the previous question, I, I wouldn't fear either side. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I just don't. And it's not tough guy energy. It's just where I am, where I am in life. And I come to that like years ago. One time, me and my son, he was little. And we was out, um, this is the first time before I started the Dirty Angels organization, it was just me and him, we just went out and we had like, from my merch line, just the sweaters and hoodies that were defected. Mm -hmm. We went out and gave it to people that was, you know, homeless, because it's cold. So, <laughs> this one cat, we, go, we pull up to the bus station, bus stop, this motherfucker like a ghost, like a zombie. He was like, he just rose from the dead, you know what I'm saying? And Elijah like, that, he's pulling my shirt like, I had every decision I needed to make thousands of years of decisions in like five, two seconds. Do I approach him with him? And the answer was yes, because we do not, I do not want to teach my son a spirit of fear, right? And whatever's gonna happen is supposed to happen. I'm here with good intentions to help mm -hmm. this person, you know what I'm saying? And sure enough, so if I had to defend myself and do something to this guy, he'll have to see it. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Um, but there's a lesson in it regardless. However, nothing happened. It was a very pleasant experience. The dude wanted to hug me. I reluctantly hugged him. You know what I'm saying? You know, motherfuckers be like, yo. <laughs> and it was, it was actually dope. It was beautiful. You know what I'm saying? So I just don't have that with nobody. I don't move, like, like he said, I don't move with, with fucked up energy. My intentions are always good. Mm -hmm. But I also, I know I walk in my truth. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a warrior. You know what I'm saying? So I know that. And it's not tough guy shit at all because a warrior is hump, is peace, is humility. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, but I know people can feel that energy. Mm -hmm. So, if somebody wanted to do something to me or take something from me, they know it's not gonna be easy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not. You know? And and I think it go towards because I don't think it's fear. I think it's caution. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, now it's that's what wise. a person, yeah. Yeah. what a person, you know, happens in. But it's alertness. So like, right. if, if you are dangerous, you alert at all mm -hmm. times. Like 100%. for me. I don't know what it is. I, I noticed that no matter where I'm at, I'm alert. Like I'm in the yeah. most dangerous place in the world. You have to be. You understand me? I don't care where I'm walking. I'm always thinking somebody around the corner. I never let that like decrease. I never let that yeah. sleep because I yeah. know that that's the moment you actually in danger. Mm -hmm. Now is that from your upbringing? Yeah, that's from my upbringing. Okay. Growing up as a Muslim and growing up in the streets. Growing up in FOI, we taught that. Mm -hmm. But then growing up in the streets, you live that. You understand me? So it's like you go, you got the FOI who giving you the training on how to move at all times. And growing up in Oakland, it was an actual dangerous environment. Mm -hmm. So we inside this headquarters, but right outside, we in the hood. Right. Then you gotta go home on a different side. 
So you back in the hood where they don't they don't care about all that Muslim shit. Right. You right, understand right. me? If you don't move correctly, then anything can happen. Mm -hmm. So like keeping your head on the swivel, we a drill. But the drilling was an exercise so that you always maintain sharpness. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Keeping your peripheral visions, checking mm -hmm. the car. Every all of those little nuanced things that the average person won't think about ever can actually Cause when you, it's a different way. Somebody tracking you, they can tell if you alert or not. Mm -hmm. You understand me? You looking around, right. all of that. They like, nah, that ain't the one. And you moving in ways that makes it inconveniencing. Yeah, for them, you know. Yeah. Like um, you want to track it. Even serial killers go for easy targets. That's why they go for for women. They not going for grown men that's walking mm -hmm. by themselves. Facts. Cause now. Number one, it's gonna be more of a situation where they can get caught. Mm -hmm. A person get a punch in, they spill some blood, that's yeah. DNA on the scene. Mm -hmm. They want somebody easy. Right. Mm -hmm. Same thing with gangsters though. Gangsters, you can be the most gangster how you want to, but they still looking for soft targets. Mm -hmm. Take case in point, you know what's just happened with the breath, PNB and how things usually occur. You 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 catch somebody off guard. You're not mm -hmm. catching them when they got the homies. You're not right. catching them when you yeah. know they got something on them. Yeah. You go catch them with the family. That's soft target time. You mm -hmm. you go catch them with no security. You know what's what's interesting about that, bro? He's had like four or five situations just like that with mm. his family. You know what I'm saying? In that area too. Yeah, that's you know what I mean. So, you know, and from what I hear, he was moving. He would typically move with the right people and yeah. move properly. You I know mean, what I'm saying? From Philly, I would imagine. I, I, yeah. I heard, and I'm not 100 percent sure, but I heard he pulled up in the Maybach. At yeah, the that World that Files. happened. I mean, that's, yeah, that's that's that was that was part of it, and yeah. he and he had on a lot of like a Grammy of night type jewelry. You know what I'm saying? So you got that. You that was not a a wise move, yeah. and where he was at, everybody know that plaza is super hot. Yeah, God, it's super the, hot. Think about LA. I remember I was talking to Derek Grace one day, and we was talking about how. One of his big homies told him in LA, he came out from the airport and he had on slippers. And he had told him, he had checked him, like he pulled up on him, not in the airport, he met him somewhere in LA at a restaurant. And he was like, bro, what are you doing with these? Like, we don't wear slippers out in LA. You understand me? Like, niggas scrap in LA. And he was like, don't ever come here again wearing no slippers. So, and I remember he used to tell that story all the time because every time he had LA, he put on them shoes. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it could be something as small as that, but what it really is is just putting you in a mindset. Not that you about to scrap and get into no nah, actual it's real. fight, it's real. but like them shoes represent your alertness. Like you know right. where you at, yeah. you dressing for your environment. Yeah. Like yeah. that's the culture and the politics around here. So everywhere you go, you gotta respect where you at. You understand me? You gotta move, you know, like the apex of that place move. For sure. It's irresponsible for a man to move and not be alert, especially when he have people to take care of. Oh, that's a family. Uh, family, a girlfriend, whatever. You know what I mean? But so, so that's I want to um, touch back on when y'all was talking about the, the positive music. What do you think personally it'll take to shake the culture where that it's not so much trap music and people starting to yeah. put out positive music? And they're not afraid to because uh, let me let me t let me touch oh, on that, bro. I got something on that too. Just, just I don't I I really don't care for it to change. Personally, you don't care for the change. Okay. For for music, because mm -hmm. for me, music is entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. And personally, I am entertained by trap music. It's it's a part of my upbringing. You know, something I really relate to. Um, is you it say the trap beats or trap? Is it the the lyrics? Trap both. Well, both. trap. It ain't the beat. The beats change. Beats change over time. The subject matter. I like hearing it. Just like I like watching John Wick. You know what I mean? And that's super over the top. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So I, I like I always hear that comparison. I don't know. I don't I think, think it's different. Man. Rap music and acting compare to each other. They, they don't. both No, no, no. Rap are, music is better. It's a better form of entertainment. Yeah, Look, because it's, it's a, a more culture pure. around there's no culture around the movie. Nah. Besides well, no, like fandom. Well, well, it's different. a culture around like, let's say like a mafia movie or even like belly or juice. For those who are already in it though. Right. You know and it's and it's very compelling. That's like, it's compelling to people who, who are not in it. They're like, wow. But I, movies don't particularly get you into crime. And you can't particularly say rap gets you into crime. But what it does is you say you're talking about something that it, it adds to that, that culture of crime. You understand I don't know, me? bro. I think that. I hear you. Nah, I think. I think it's a little bit conflated. It's the soundtrack I, I, to, to, I think, to, the, to, the, to the trap. Like you nah, make trap music for trap it, niggas who trap who nah, sell but drugs what it is, in real but life. But you make trap movies for the same shit then, right? But I mean, think what's about trap think about New Jersey, New Jersey Drive, Belly, Juice. There's a lot of 
a lot of classics, right? I, I, but that's really hip hop too, because look who all played those rappers. Yeah, but it's still a movie though. <laughs> yeah. It's still a I movie. Know, but it's still it's the element of the rapper in that. He's he's going to be that figure in it. Like but there's you go, no rappers in power. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Kendrick Lamar was in power. I mean, a minor, <laughs> a minor role, a minor role. All right, but, but hear me out, hear me out. I think what it is is the fact that it's real official cats. 50 Cent was in power, first of all. Hold on, we're not going to act like power ain't 50 but this, Cent universe. This, this is beautiful, yeah. though. Hear me out. So you have cats that, like, the music is a tangible thing in which a man from the hood who's certified, got money, all of that, can invest, take his money and invest in music, invest in an artist, or himself or whatever and make that transition out. That's why I love I love it. Because if you didn't have it's that aspirational, that's if, why. Yeah, and so let's say but trap acting, shit let's say trap shit was, was done. Mm -hmm. Trap shit, gangster music, all of that shit is done. They like, all right, fuck it, we staying here. You know what I'm saying? We ain't gonna do no no positive shit, no positive rap. That's not a they're not positive. I, I, their I, lifestyles are not positive I, I, like but, that. But that's that's because let's take let's go back then the back in the day, right? All right. Cast that's from the hood was still rapping, they just weren't rapping trap shit, or they weren't even rapping gangster shit. It became lyrics. So you mean like, when you mean way, way back? Like let's just say even during the gangster rap, there was still cats that were like it's people call it bat pat rap, other type of rap. Yeah, I'm talking about you. more competitive, where it's like, yo, like look at battle rap right now. Yeah. And, uh, like battle rap don't cause violence. You understand me? Yeah, because but they, it's, they, they, it's competitive. They talking the same shit. I, it is, but you know it's competitive and it's based on a competitive nature. So it's is Meek, still masculine. Is Meek Mill a trap rapper or is he a battle rapper? Because that was his genesis, battle rapper. Uh, he started off as a battle ba rapper. Yeah. You understand me? Yeah. And then I think he more of an aspirational street rapper. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Because he explains it a lot mm -hmm. of like, I'm showing this because I want to give way to a lifestyle so mm -hmm. people can dream more. I came from this, but I don't want y'all to keep going through this. Right. So I think that the good thing about what somebody like he does, he tried to make his lifestyle aspirational to say that, look, I didn't get what you got by doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I got it by doing what I'm doing in a legal way. As, you understand me? As he matures, his music maturing. Yeah, he, he, he did talk a lot music, about yeah. the shit, right? Slide, all of that. But, but look, his favorite, his, his, the he's, greatest he's song he got is like it. a, it's a, it's a, the intro, like, oh, yeah. dreams and nightmares, like, yeah. that. none of that makes you want to live a lifestyle of, like, drug dealing. It's, it's, it's a feeling. Yeah, yeah, but the lyrics is still I know, but killing, music, drug dealing, all of that. Lift so, like, you up, though. Do yeah, like, you go to Gucci, man. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. I rock with it. It's just better. No, no, no. It ain't, it's the same. It's the same, though. No. Oh, but the Meek feeling is better. different. Gucci Meek man is better. like Gucci man with the with the with the uh I'm talking about Gucci man with the belly. You understand me? <laughs> like you you wanted to go shoot dice, sip lean, beat somebody up, up I gotta be in the trap. Cause you feel like you gotta live a lifestyle to listen to Gucci uh, man. It's, yeah, it's different. No, it ain't the lyrics. It's the nightmares. The, it's the I lifestyle. It, I think it stir up your spirit it. different, man. It's it like, do, yeah. but it's, it's, it's vibe. it ain't the music. But that it, ain't never been broke down though. Like really it's not the music. It it's music it's that man. Uh -huh. It's Meek Mill. And and it's the Meek, lifestyle. Meek Mill is extremely and, and it's motivational. And the instruments, it's the music he yeah. uses, the beats is uplifting. He man. said, "I did songs yeah. with Mariah." Like you ain't, you don't little nigga. No I'm on fire. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that's that's different. You feel me? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And I love Meek, and I love this song. It's one of my favorite songs of Shout all. Shout out to me. If I ever fight again, I'm coming out to that song. Facts. Okay. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Jim Jones because he brought me out my last fight. So anyway, I put my shooters on their feet. Come on, you know what I'm saying? He's starting out. I give, I give him your address. I give him, I give him your address. I give him your address. I give him your address and go to sleep. He gonna come do an interview for you. Me getting them dropped off with the Uber. What is you saying? It's a good guy right here. The money turn them niggas the monsters. Yeah. The white don turn my niggas into Nazi lord. And the money turn. Let me not read all this shit. But listen, it has nothing to do with what he's saying, bro. It's how he's saying it. The tonality, yeah. The tonality, the art, the art, the artist, like a timeline. So look, but but also, hit me up, hit me up, bro, bro. Rap ain't about an individual. That culture is about the culture. This is what the lifestyle itself. I think this is proving my point. My point is this: it's the art of it all. You know what I'm saying? The aggression. The lyrics, the 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 rhyming, the pattern, his his tone of voice, all of that shit, the beats. That's what it ain't got nothing to do and, with the lyrics. And don't Look. get me wrong, some movies have made this want to live that lifestyle. You understand me? Mm -hmm. Where they really want to be Scarface, or they really want to be yeah. uh, DMX and Belly. You understand me? Uh, uh, and, and, but you know, in the means that they go about gaining a lifestyle is is usually the the, the issue. 
You understand me? Mm. So it's like, you know, yes, it's all entertainment, but that this is the only form of entertainment that's actually attached to a real street shit, mm. right? Because it's different Movies if the if the though. mobsters, but that's a different level. If the mobsters make a movie and then they they really go back and do some shit that's some mafia shit, or they Robert done, De Niro or they've done it and now they're doing a movie about Ro- it. Yeah, but that's that's after the fact. Mm. Robert De Niro ain't shooting nobody. He, he ain't, ain't no, running no. He ain't no gangster. He ain't though. running nothing. He's a he's a Al Pacino ain't either, but they play not, yeah, they all play the gangsters it. in all the yeah. movies. Reservoir yeah. Dogs. You go you go look at all of them. Them you don't believe that that's them. You go see nah. them in real life and want to. I don't know about y'all, but listening to a song versus listening and watching the movie, the effect is different. Absolutely, not for me, but I hear the a song. Out, you know, is it's different. It's different. Hold the words. Hold on, hold on. Hold hey, hold what on. they say? Lucifer was the head of the choir, man. That shit, man, that shit, that shit. It's mute. Real, but look, look, look. Bro. What happens when you listen to music? You bob in your head. You yeah. are in a state of agreement. You are in relaxation. Mm-hmm. You understand me? You are taken into the program. And it is sound repetitive. It is mind control. It's it's that maybe for some people. What happens when I'm the, listening the 99%. to music? Ninety nine percent. When I'm listening to the music, I'm I'm the beat got me first. The, who the rapper is, what they talking about, all of that shit don't really matter. Their rhymes, their patterns, the the bars, the complexity of their bars, the the punch lines. You know what I'm saying? If a nigga got entendres, double entendres, triple entendres, Little Wayne be saying some ridiculous shit, but yep. it doesn't matter. It's how clever he is. Is I love that shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what that's saying? what I mean by competitive even, rap. Even, even Eminem, bro. Eminem talking about raping mom. I don't know what he's saying. But it's so creative and cool, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, his and last that's, verses. That's what I be. That's what so I be. Far. That's what I be. Uh, so entertained by. <laughs> For real. I be entertained yeah. by it. And hold on, here's another thing. We all like comedy, right? Yeah. yeah. Comedy be saying some bullshit, right? I mean, shocking things. That's entertainment. We want to hear something that we ain't supposed to hear. This is the you only form of genre that doesn't want you to know is entertainment sometimes. And that's why, because they try to sell mm-hmm. it to you as truth and reality. No, nah, I think we're putting that on it. I think we're putting that on so, it. So, rappers try their hardest a lot of time to say that this is real. And now these young street rappers, a lot of shit they do be real. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. when you talk about drill rap, drill mm-hmm. rap is synonymous that's connected to crimes that actually happen. You understand me? And cats that's really in it. That's the difference. Yeah, you know I mean, I don't, like, I don't think everybody's it's, it's, in it like that. A, a actor is a, and a ball player and all the other people. Their life starts to go up and transform and take them away from them circumstances more and more and more. Well, rappers, they believe that the close proximity that they keep make them realer. You understand me? So therefore, they stay connected to things. Well, here's the thing, though. Here's a here's a here's a uh, an aspect of it. A lot of these guys, they go and go to the hood and get dudes from the hood to keep them safe. Yeah. So then there's a certain level of authenticity that's placed on them because of their affiliation with motherfuckers that's really real, really doing it. And that's, look, it is what it is, man. Like, listen, just because a person comes from, you know, a, a spotty background, we can't count people like that out. A lot of brilliance comes mm. from that. You know what I'm saying? I don't even blame rappers for it, per se. I'm just saying that the culture has more influence on real life. You understand me? Because, a, like, let's let's take a Lil Wayne and Birdman back in the day, man. They had fake jury on. But cats in the street thought it was real. So they did things to go get that jury because they wanted to live that lifestyle. They didn't know it was business marketed. They didn't know it was a ploy. They didn't know it was fake until you make it. So that has an effect on the psyche of the mind. It's like, oh, to be a street nigga, this is what they getting. Okay. I got to go get that. I got to go rob so, some. I might, so you feel who, me? Who, all right, so the responsibility falls on, first of all, people's parents, families, and the person ultimately because which is a beautiful statement but when you already got a reality of broken families it's already late you understand me so mm-hmm. your target is broken families so where you where the, the the responsibility will may lie on this this having that father and that mother as a shield to get them consciousness you already targeting households that don't have that mm-hmm. so therefore they more susceptible to the messaging mm-hmm. we have that's true but we do have this is a new generation and this generation is a lot different than the previous generation, right? Previous generation was very broken, very, very kind of fucked up, right? But this generation now, it's a lot of responsible black men that's doing positive, powerful things. How many millionaires we all know? You know what I'm saying? A lot. You you could have, like, my father, maybe a couple he knew, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we know a, a lot, that's a, a lot, and good men too. Not just motherfuckers just got money, just doing it big and just living like savages. Matter of fact, I don't think I know any savage, 
any savage people like that that's making a lot of money people that i really fuck with you know what i'm saying so it's a lot of good people and i know that our our children and their children are going to come up in a way better situation because we're closer like me and my son listen to the same music you know what I'm saying? I, I, I hey, look, think bro, hip hop won't. De- like I love, I love, love rap music. Like you know what I'm saying. Love it. And, and, and like I said, I, I've said it before. I don't particularly put all of that blame on rap culture and music. I'm just talking about the nuance of the influence of it right now. But mm-hmm. the reality of it is, is that it should be separated. Mm-hmm. And like what you're saying is a complete statement because there are new archetypes for young Correct. cats to look up to. There are, I'm gonna keep saying it's like, it's the three E's, it's education, exposure, experience. Education is what's in your mind that you can use. You understand me? Exposure is how vast your mind is, how expanded, how large your mind mm-hmm. is. You understand me? And your experience is how you go use your mind. So that's how you use the information that you get, mm-hmm. right? And so for me, being able to show them an exposure like this is a black man who just uses his mind daily like i'll be one people to get that so into they head like you know and it's hard to break it down sometime in a sense to where it has to be connotated with a strong feeling Mm because what we consider to be gangster is strength is masculinity it's what you consider to be toughness but strength it's something that's no longer looked at as a core that people go towards. So mm. like for me, it's like, nah, intelligence is strength. Mm. Like that's something you gotta build up so that that's part of your makeup of what you consider toughness. Right. And if a young cat be like, yo, the smarter I am, the stronger I am, then they gonna wanna possess strength because they know that that's gonna take them to the top of the pecking order. Mm-hmm. So I think it's the way that things are marketed, the way that things are branded, the way that things are spoken, this is the reason that you don't even know to go toward strength. You actually going toward weakness because you going for just money. You get the money with no strength. You understand me? So you ain't got no ability to uh, uh, properly uh, protect it. You understand me? Take care of it. Then you ain't got the education. So you don't know how to grow it, right. manage it. These are the new areas that we challenge young men in and young women to say that, yo, this is the strength you've been looking for. Correct. So yeah. like piggybacking off that, do you feel like the media is demasculating the black man right now? I mean, they. I think they're trying to demasculate all men. All right? men. All, and I, listen, I agree with that listen. Part too. They're not. They don't. Nobody has their foot on our necks. I, I see their foot on white people necks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look, they get beat up too. But here's the thing: strong people will rise. Like the cream always rises. Is always is an eighty twenty rule that applies to all. It's a universal like coding to where there's always the smallest pieces of any sector of life mm-hmm. produce the most. You know what I'm saying? So is there a demasculation? This is my theory. The people at the highest parts of se- highest sectors of society want to keep their position safe. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Them and their families. So it's not in their best interest for the people to be first of all united and also like free thinking and powerful, right? If the men are not powerful and fully into their masculinity, it, you know, it's kind of how it is now. Like the women are kind of like leading the way. It's just you know, what I mean? yeah. you know what I mean. But here's the thing. I mean, once again, I'm gonna go back to like the people I know. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's not a reality in, in my world, right? So we have to just continue to be men and continue to uh, uh, represent the way that we do. Like uh, reject these notions that you know, uh, you know, what is it called? The uh, the male. The, the toxic masculinity like, or the like, like it's, yeah. that's it's not a so, thing like so, what are you talking about so, so, what, so what's to be yo? hold on for a man to not be masculine is toxic that's that's Fair. poisonous oh, yeah, yeah. you know what i mean for Fair. a woman to have a man that she feel like she has to lead she she's she's growing hatred in her heart mm-hmm. and that's that's toxic you know what i'm saying Fair. so we have to be men we have to be strong and powerful right um you and adam was talking about how uh, testosterone levels are de- decreasing and he made a good point because we don't work in fields we don't have to do hard work anymore correct but we do know there's ways that we can continue to keep our testosterone right. at optimal levels by putting ourselves through hard work in the gym or on a right. track or Just basketball or anything do you, do you feel like it's a recipe for disaster because you look at our culture most of them is broken homes so then you got basically media raising the kids and this is what they all seeing so how do you combat nah, this I don't, shit that's on TV well, right now also with the, the lack of fathers seeing. is the issue yeah. so if you don't if you don't get served an example of masculinity 
then you don't know what to become because you don't have that exposure, right? You don't have no experience around it. Your father teaching you the small little nuanced things, how to walk, how to talk, how to deal with certain fears, how to gain courage. You understand me? All of those things are missing. You go seek and find it, but you find in all of these different sources. You don't even know if it was a good source in the first place. Man, social media and podcasts ruin the game for a lot of people. Um, just because it gives people false expectations on what value is. Mm. You understand me? It's like the moment that you equate value to what a man has instead of who he is, you're already losing. You understand me? Because who he is is how he going to treat you. You understand me? And what your future going to look like. Rites of passage. You understand me? Like rites of passage was adversity you had to go through. A Native American in some places, they'd, they'd take you and you got to go in the forest for three days and forage for your own food. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And that was part of your rites of passage. As in parts of Africa, you had to go out and kill a lion. Yeah. And come like, back come back with the hide or think, you're not a man. Think about even mm -hmm. in India, like walking on coals and like mm -hmm. on, like we don't have those. And, and rites of passage out here is like sexual rites of passage. You know what I mean? You're not a virgin no more, right? Mm -hmm. Like you conquer a woman. So we don't have those things that's really based on your own self-development, your internal. Mm -hmm. So for me, absolutely 100% the effeminization agenda is real for men mm -hmm. and for black men especially. But for black men, it's just been going on longer. You understand me? And now the system is like, no, nah, we don't just need to emasculate black men. We got to emasculate these white men, too, because we don't want them starting armies fighting against us, mm -hmm. right? Challenging these systems that be. Mm -hmm. It's easier for those that's in those chairs of power who believe in, you know, they, they, they believe in overpopulation. So what happens in a system where you got overpopulation? You got to figure out another way to control the population. You Wait, don't what do you have mean overpopulation. This, this is a very important question to get right because it was it was absolutely key for me when our foundation first started up. It was focused on reproductive health. That was the main thing we did because I thought, you know, population growth in poor countries is the biggest problem they face. You've got to help mothers who want to limit family size have the tools and education to do that. And I thought that's the only thing that really counts. You know, we have an underpopulation problem. Really? Yeah. Why, why do you so say that? So this is the most commonly misunderstood situation. Yeah, they definitely push that we have a mm -hmm. overpopulation. Yeah, why is that? No, no, we, I don't know. It's just like, I think it's like, this is a holdover from like, I don't know, the 70s or something, you know? So there was a huge um, baby boom like where people did have a ton of kids after World War II. But then the U.S. has actually been, had, the birth rate in the U.S. has been below replacement rate since like 71 or 72. In the U.S., like 50 but how years, about, how 50 about years other the U.S. has been below, below replacement rate. I know U.S., but how about other countries? Um, well, like China has got a huge population collapse problem. Really? Yeah. We got to mm -hmm. get rid of this nonsense that we have an overpopulation issue. We have an underpopulation issue. Why do you think so? That? You know, well, overpopulation will really be an issue Bill Gates brought up about Africa. Mm. Depopulation is the issue that Elon brought up about America. It's happening here. Yeah, yeah. so depopulation over here, of course, is given the fact that their birth rates have consistently decreased right. and it's going to be a mixed world, which really, it ain't no such thing as mixed, so it's going to be a black let, let, world let me by say this. Let me 2030. Say this. That's let me what say they this. Fear. Let me say this. It ain't going to be, I don't know if it's going to be that, but let me say this just because it's a lot of misconceptions out there, right? And black people get so uh, offended by certain terms like nigga, right? <sighs> Listen, you should be offended by being called a minority. <laughs> That's a lie and it's silly. So I was doing some research and lo and behold, so white people make up 9% of the total Earth's population, 9%. Mm -hmm. Black people only in Africa, right? I'm just talking about in one continent, right? We're everywhere. <laughs> make up 18% of the world's population. Which is go increase double 18, by like 2050. 18%. Uh, Asians, it's like 45% of them. It's like, what are we talking about minority? What is this word? What is this word you say to me? <laughs> what are you talking about? Now here's the thing though, here's, here's where I'm at with it. Now, let's talk about family, right? Family, I'm gonna go back, back, back. Family is a construct. It's not real. We come up with the concept of family because that's what we do. That's what we've done, right? But we're just people, you know what I mean? And I want to get to the root of this race situation, right? Uh-oh, here we so, go. Here we cause, go. Because listen, here's the thing. Well, like, I, I, we were talking about it the other night. Like, I divorced myself for the, from the notion of race. I know that I'm a black, I'm a, I identify as a black person. I'm a black man. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm a camera guy. I identify as a god, actually. You know what I mean? So uh, do what you want with it. But anyway, the whole notion of race that was created by the Europeans, I'm divorced from. It's not on me. None of that filth is on me. This is undisputedly, objectively, it was, it's a fact that it was created by the Europeans. One of the first people to attempt to categorize humans according to race was a German scientist around 1776. He came up with five different groups according to physical appearance and geographic origin of their ancestors. Americans of European descent eagerly bought into this type of thinking around the same time. Some historians have said the idea that there were different races helped them resolve the contradiction between a natural right to freedom and the fact of slavery. If whites were their own distinct category, then they could feel a lot better about denying freedom to people who they labeled black and decided were fundamentally different. They, it's a construct. The census was created, it's only here in America because when I'm in other countries, they think it's weird that we say black and white. You know what I mean? Like Australia, they're like, why do you, we're just Australian. Hmm. Like, you're American. Like, nah, I'm black. I'm a black American. I'm like, that's, American, that's that weird. Is. Yeah. So, <laughs> other places, oh, now there's pockets that pick up on our cue and do what we do, the mm -hmm. foolish shit, but this is an American thing. Don't get it twisted. Now, mm -hmm. not saying that people don't treat different groups, ethnic groups, differently. They do, right? But this whole thing with race, I have a problem with because, you know, these Europeans keep changing the rules, right? Just like in 2020, they changed the rules again to create a host. There used to be for like Middle Eastern, that was a, a race, it's not. Middle Eastern and Northern Africans are now Caucasians, according to the Census Bureau here in America. Hmm. Middle Easterns and Northern Africans, you feel me? It's like, come on, bro. So they're now, so. And to add I, some more people I, to the team. Right, I have no, I'm not part of this. The race was, race, it's like saying like, like dogs, right? Dogs can mate with each other and have babies. A dog and a cat can't mate with each other. It's not gonna, nothing to happen. It'd be weird, right? But a black, a white, a Mexican, a Chinese mate have a baby. Now what is that baby? You know what I'm saying? The whole concept of race is fucked up the moment the first biracial person was born. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe in, I don't believe in biracial or mixed. What, what do you mean? Because I, there's no such color as mixed. You understand me? Whatever it comes out is, that's what it is. But what is what is the color then? If anything, black is a culture, white is a culture. Okay. And you identify with the culture. You understand Correct. me? That you believe that, you know, uh, 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 um, so it's does, part of your identity. So does it have anything to do with the, the color of our skin? The melanin? Yeah. It, the melanin represents the dominant aspect of yourself. You understand me? So you all whatever dominant wait, wait, wait. always wins. Aspect, okay. Not oh, we, even we aspect. About, that's who you are. Okay, we talking about melanin, the actual chemical of melanin that's in our body, right? The hormones, whatever, right? That and and I believe it goes deeper than skin. Mm. So when you look at a person, it definitely goes into the formation of your mind. Like melanin has something to do with your eyes, the way your brain forms, what okay. you think. All of those things, the way you process information, mm -hmm. you understand me? And then it can be activated by the culture and the particular knowledge that's put into that person because you're gonna be more just, prone just on a biological, to biological On a biological level though, we talking about melanin. All right, so, because I wanna understand. But I don't know if you can separate biological melanin, psychological melanin in that sense. So because can one have melanin psychologically and not biologically? Yes. Okay, then, then you because, can separate it. Like, you know one of the greatest yeah. white men in history was, right? Who? John Brown. Okay. You know John Brown is? Of course. John Brown was smoking shit, man. <laughs> Back in the day. He was, I watched that movie. He was a, man, a movie, of course, Hollywood representation. Mm. Um, but he was an abolitionist white man who was knocking down another white man for owning slaves. Mm. You understand me? Boy, was so cold. But you, like, I, those who adhere, back in the day that I was helping John Brown, they had that melanin psychology. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Okay. I rock with that. That's melanin psychology too. So me. that's a psychology that's learned. That's a behavior or a mind state that's 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 uh, nurtured. Yeah, from early on, because you know your identity, you'll get that from one to seven. Mm -hmm. You feel me? That's who yeah. you are. So I hundred, I totally agree with you. Yeah. Right. What I don't rock with is the confinements and the separation that people uh, assign to themselves and to others. 
based on race. You know I what think saying? that's because they biologically identify with one team over the other. Mm-hmm. You understand me? Like if they had to choose, it's like here's these black people. Like one of the things about us is that you can't take away our spirit, mm-hmm. right? Spirituality and the rhythm that we have because of melanin and things of that nature in our right. culture is a separating identifiable factor, right. right? It's something that you can look at all layers of that human being and see. And so then, you know, that's, that's our logical disposition of how we go about dealing with reality. Mm-hmm. Then you got capitalism, which is more steeped into, a, you know, a, a, a cold psychology. Mm-hmm. You understand me? Mine or yours. Mm-hmm. You understand me? The half and the have nots, mm-hmm. right? Those are completely different value systems. Right, so now we are at this point of separating ourselves based on our values. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Well, one person be like, "Man, I, I hear you talking that righteous shit, but I'd rather get money. Mm-hmm. I'd rather go on this capitalist side." So I identify right. more with white patriarchal thinking and intellect than I do Afrocentric thinking, spirituality. Mm-hmm. You understand me, and intellect. Mm-hmm. So you start to make a choice in your mind. Right, where black people is talking about this kumbaya come together, let's be spiritual and all of that. You like, nah, I'd rather rule above those who don't know. Mm-hmm. And this is the mentality of being a ruler instead of being in peace. Mm-hmm. And this is that's the separating factor psychologically. So if you white and you find yourself in the rhythm of identifying against oppression, then I rock with you a hundred percent. You mm-hmm. understand me? But if you black and you identify with the oppressor more, then I don't rock with you mm-hmm. uh, at all. Right. So for me, you know, your skin color is not what make you my kin. It's not what make you my brother. I need to know how you think. I need to know where your spirit is 100%, at. Bro, yeah, Otherwise, yeah, I, I don't rock this with is, you this, at all. This, this is literally exactly my sentiments. So um, I'm glad I heard that from you. I just, you know, I, I wasn't sure where you were at on that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, it's funny because I did a, uh, uh, Fahim and I, we, we did a video, we were just training and in the video we're talking, just having a conversation about race. And I was saying these things and I was talking about how, and, and I wanna hear y'all opinion on this, you know, um, how I feel like we're on even playing fields with white people. And this is why I say that. All right, <laughs> people got so triggered, right? Some people, right? And other people got it. So this is what I mean by that. Now. We're, there's no longer, there's no laws anymore saying you can't read, you can't go to school, or you can't make money, right? It used to be, right? So that's not even playing fields, you know what I mean? Just being black, hanging out outside vagrancy laws, like, like you getting thrown in jail and leased off to a plantation, you feel me? So those days are, are, are gone, right? We're in a really good situation right now to where there's nothing pre- preventing us from making millions of dollars every month, every week, every year or whatever, right? There's nothing preventing us from moving in spaces where we used to be prohibited from moving, right? And I gladly go over there and smile, like, what's up? What's up, nigga? He was like, what's up, nigga? I, listen, I make people uncomfortable if they try to make me uncomfortable, you know what I'm saying? And I'll throw that word around lighter skinned people, you know what I'm saying? Because it's funny to me, especially when they're trying to like make me feel a certain way. You're gonna, you're gonna lose that battle, but anyway, the fact that we do go through so much shit in our, our genesis coming up, we have to dig out of a deficit, it makes us so strong. Do everybody get out? Absolutely not. But once again, it's always the people that do the greatest things on this planet, it's in small numbers. Not everybody makes it, you know what I'm saying? But just because not everybody make it, it doesn't mean that the people that make it are special or the are, are you know, God placed them down here amongst these peasants and only they made it because this is the energy that people are giving me. Like, well, you can say that. I'm like, nah. All of my friends have come from really fucked up but backgrounds. The, there's some truth to that, though. Just think about it. We know that there's nine person uh, uh, intelligence types. There's different personality mm-hmm. types. So a society can be built towards those, you understand me, whose personality type have a certain type of intelligence. Right, mm. you know, it's like being in front of the camera or a person like now, you know, a person that can finance the shit can still make more money than a person in front of the camera. Mm. But let's say if the world is based on attention, mm. all of those who have extroverted personalities, charismatic, charismatic, able to communicate, they have an automatic advantage over the rest of the population who doesn't. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, some people can grow into it. There's certain people that are naturally in tune with that. Mm-hmm. So if you have a world that you know, these qualities are more valuable than others, then there's already gonna be a certain amount of people who subjugated 
to live at a lesser level. An right. artist that wants to define their life by the art that they make, and they just love that. Mm. Then you got a person that builds a business because they just love that. Like, I love figuring out right. marketing or sales yeah. or branding or systems. That man that make that marketing gonna make more money each and every time. He's gonna give value more in society. Mm -hmm. But it's nothing that makes him more special than that person. It's just the way our society is set up is built for people like him to succeed higher and go higher than that person. Mm -hmm. So it's like we never really are able to fully see, you know, a society that creates every avenue for all people to be successful based on they loves, they interests, they skill, they talent, they gifts. Okay, but there's that's a one dimensional look at it. There are so many people, like that one person who have that particular talent that can draw people to them, that's that's courageous enough to stand in front of people and speak, right? That person needs a microphone, he needs lighting set up, you feel me? There's so many other ways, right, to contribute to a society to contribute to 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 get into a better situation than just being that the guy the guy you know what yeah i, mean? I know but it's not always as profitable as what i'm saying you understand i don't, I don't know i don't know i don't like, i don't know if i agree with that for like, me like just think about this you know guys who ain't got to be in front mm -hmm. right they can minimum uh, exposure but they can make millions of dollars correct they mind is more prone towards just systems and they love that shit. Mm -hmm. i'm gonna create a funnel i'm gonna make some money i'm gonna rinse i'm gonna right. wash i'm gonna repeat right if if that's not something, because for a lot of people, they that will make them depressed even doing that, mm -hmm. right? Funnel system, shit like that. Right. Theirs is, I want to sing, I want to write. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But society, or, or just the way capitalism structure, it's gonna be better towards what his likes are rather than yours. His is more profitable nah, than think, yours. I don't think so, bro, because I, I believe the the most millionaires we have now are tech people. They're not, they're not even good speakers. But that's you know a good example because we now in the tech age. So right. therefore, there was a time and age when that wasn't that valuable. Because so it wasn't you, exactly. no internet. Going no, to the yeah. 90s, those guys wouldn't have had that money. Mm -hmm. You understand me? They interest would have just, mm, square ass tech guys that's interested in the code and this shit. But there were rich people Now before, there's an industry for it. There was rich people before there was like, people in front of a camera. But the you know tech I mean? guys weren't the rich ones. They was working no, no, for the rich no, no. people but, but and they the, didn't have an opportunity to I'm get saying, that kind what of What I'm saying though is like to to drive a, a, a civilization forward, a society forward, man, it's, it's bro, it's millions everywhere for oh, everybody. Yeah. I don't believe you know I mean? in no excuses. Yeah. I'm just saying though how the, the world is made. Like, cause even for those people now, I think, cause you talked about equal playing field. I think that there is, there's a lot of measurement by, by ra that. By race, race racial. Cause it, cause I, I a lot of people, a lot of people are saying it ain't even, it ain't fair. Well, I, you know, fairness and even. I don't think that'd be a utopian world if it was fair and even everywhere. I think that well, that's life the is reality of it. Life is not fair. I, the, just the, the, the internet has created a kind of an even playing field. Everybody don't have access to the internet, is what I was gonna say. Mm -hmm. true. Right? You go to Africa, your biggest expense is gonna be internet. Everybody can't even afford that. So it's like the tool that we have in America that allows us to start playing on the even playing field and we broadcast the meshes out, the average person's like, man, I had to pay goddamn $10 just to hear this message. We are so like, fortunate. I don't have it. We are so we fortunate to be Super here. Super spoiled, spoiled. don't you know, appreciate it. I used to not be as appreciative until I started traveling the world. Yeah. I was like, yo, I need to get back, back yeah. home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, humble, yeah. we have so many like luxuries that's just normal to us. Well, I think the world is, look at, we got blockchain today, mm. right? Like activists of the, back in the day, they wanted to fight the system. You understand me? Even back in the, back in those days, and this, this part of my thesis on blockchain is that I feel like it was created because you needed to give the people hope, right? Mm. Remember when they had the 1% during Bush where it was Occupy Wall Street? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you got blockchain and Occupy Wall Street at the same time, that creates a political funnel directly into cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. Because you had black and white people, people of all different classes, agreeing that the system was messed up. Right. But they had nothing at all to replace it. Mm -hmm. Blockchain then comes, because imagine if we going through 2022 without blockchain and cryptocurrency and hope that the future can change besides the fact that we just gotta live with these white men ruling shit and they keep fucking up the money. Mm. But now we got something that can replace it, it resets the people to be like, okay, the future can change based on these things. The problem is, is that those who have always had the voice for change and a mind for change, 
they also need to be paired with those who can make change. Mm -hmm. So they need the tech people, they need the CTOs. Right. So therefore, they can transform ideas into reality. Right. And this is the basis of what we missing. 2019, I took a trip to the Caribbean, I went to Jamaica, I went to South Africa, right before I did my tour in the States, um, and I went to the UK. Mm -hmm. And the idea was to do the Four Corner Tour, right? Where all black people dropped off, moved through, right? Mm -hmm. So I, 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 in America, they had just finished Revolt, right? And when I left there, the one thing that they was talking about is the ability to not be able to own your masters, right? And they were talking about how we need to own the culture, right? We are the culture, but we don't own it. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Africa, and they was doing a land summit. So I went to the Hip Hop Summit to the land summit, right. and the land summit was basically talking about how the South Africans, they don't own the land. Their children are getting an education where they actually know what to do with the land, but mm -hmm. even those who inherit it won't know what to do, so they can still be taken advantage and exploited. Right. Then when I go to Jamaica, I remember I went to go visit the Bubble Shanti people, the black, uh, it's called Black Warriors, and then I visited a, a, another group, and they had the oldest sovereign tribe right in Jamaica where they live outside the government jurisdiction. But people would leave there consistently because they had no structure. Mm -hmm. They had really nothing set up for them to actually mm -hmm. grow and expand. Right. You can come there, eat for free, live for free, enjoy life and freedom, mm -hmm. but people would leave. So their turnover rate was high. They needed knowledge of systems and entrepreneurship. Right. Right. In America, so, you know, and then in the UK, you got black people who don't have the sense of upward mobility, but they, they've been out of slavery longer than us in America, mm -hmm. right? They don't have that ability to ever become a so-called royal because they don't have a white bloodline that they attach to, mm -hmm. right? So they never had a savior in America. They never had a Malcolm or a Marcus or anybody that can even speak up. Right. If you speak too strongly, you will get banned. Yeah. So you, 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 what they really just needed somebody to be out there galvanizing the people. So in each one of these places, I'm like, damn, everybody is missing that one thing. You understand me? In Africa, they just had the knowledge of entrepreneurship and somebody that could show them how to deal with the colonizers they've been dealing with. Mm -hmm. For the most part, they'd be silent. They didn't have all the corrupt leadership. Yeah. In the UK, if they had a strong presence of movement of somebody that can show them how to tap into their inner royalty and develop like, yo, y'all got internet. Why y'all worrying about parliament? You mm -hmm. understand me? In Africa, it, it, well, I already talked about Africa, but in Jamaica, they got all of the fruit in the goddamn world that they need. The Bushmen go up there, they climb and they sell it on the side of the road, but the people are unhealthy because they buying the food out of cans that's imported in there mm -hmm. and they don't have control over import and export. Mm -hmm. Cause it, it, and so it's like, damn, y'all wealth is all around y'all, but y'all can't access it. Right. So it's like the, the playing field that gotta happen is on the political level as well. Because what we're doing is we fighting on the individual thing where it's like, White people get to have inherited money or houses and they get to start here in society with a society that looked like them when they walk outside. It's a different level of confidence when the buildings around you are owned by people who look like you. Yeah. That's not a playing field that you can change mm -hmm. until it changes, right? right? So to wrap up the point, Don Peoples, I was talking with him. He, he, you know, I, I believe he's a billionaire, but he got one of the largest real estate firms in America. Mm. But his fight right now is trying to put up a skyscraper. Mm. You understand me? And he want to have representation where he see his name on the building. Mm. So, it, it, but today we live in a world that's designed by somebody else. Now on an individual level, yes, I share your confidence with that reality. Mm. But in the overall scale of things, the matrix ain't designed by us. So it's much harder for a person that doesn't have one of them superior mindsets, doesn't have one of them personality or intelligent types to grow in an environment that may, that may be very rough terrain. But a, a, a college graduate still has less wealth opportunity than a, a white high school dropout. So therefore, you still have to be excellent and all they gotta do is be good in order to be great. Mm -hmm. So those are different metric systems for equality. So right. I just acknowledge all of the different nuances yeah, that you I gotta go through. The reason I acknowledge it internally, I don't vocalize a lot of it because it is, I don't wanna give anybody a reason to not continue to be but, excellent. What's that right there behind you? The mathematics. That's a difference that you got too. Having knowledge of self is I wealth. I understand that, but it's here's the thing. It's something that a person out. can't hear get unless they get it. Hear me out though, my tactics are these, because 
we all got, all of us are influential people and we have uh, people that follow us and listen to us, right? So the people that listen to me, I don't want to give them an out. No, I don't, I don't believe in excuses. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I, I tell them like, you powerful, you're a giant. You know what I mean? So, and you look, and I'll give, I'll keep giving them the example of, you know, my deficits that I started from, you know, two, a couple times, you know what I mean? Starting life all over at 30, you feel me? So, and, and becoming a millionaire within two years of being homeless, you know what I mean? So I'll keep telling them that because there's nothing special about me outside of like, I want, I don't, I never wanted to be a loser. I'm like, I fuck that, you know what I'm saying? I'll never be succumbed to. I don't think nobody gonna ever believe it's nothing special about that, you. That's though. a special mm -hmm. characteristic that a lot of people don't have, though, man. But they because only special can, people, people can develop have it. to say it's nothing special about me. <laughs> people only are developing. special. You will never meet a person that's normal. <laughs> they gotta tell you it's nothing special <laughs> about me. We know this. <laughs> right. You ain't gotta tell. But if you special, right, right. it's what DJ Khaled say. Like I said, he said there's unicorn. <laughs> some people are unicorn. Some people not unicorns. Right. I am. Right, Some right. people nah, not special, real. I am. You are special. That's true. The only difference is other people got to recognize that they special too. Trust me, I talk my shit, but yeah. amongst <laughs> us. But, but hear me out, hear me out. Because but look, do, look, do I, humility I be influence better than confidence? This is the question. Nah, nah. So you saying you're not special, you know. That's I, a tactic I, I, though. I, I that's know. A, that's a, that's a, we playing four dimensional but chess. But what's more efficient is well, what I'm asking. We four dimensional chess I, I, though. I understand it, but what's more efficient, right? You telling a person, my regular vessel, I'm a black man that grew up in America, right? Mm -hmm. If I don't work out, I don't have muscle. If mm -hmm. I don't work, I don't get money, mm -hmm. right? If I don't read, I don't learn these tactics. If I don't work with other people to learn how to communicate with them, but guess what? If, if I don't do any of those things, which is called work, now you see a scrawny black man that's average. Mm -hmm. What's special is your work ethic. Mm -hmm. You understand me? To be able to take a thought out your head and endure regardless. The thing about every person as a vessel or wherever they are, they can add that special quality by work. Correct. You understand me? So I don't think it's, and I know you're not really denying it, but I understand the tactic. I don't think the denial of you being special is the most efficient. I, I think that I've what made you myself special. democratizing special is 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 better because of saying yeah. that I've just got access to it. It's out there for right, everybody. For sure. That's, I that's, got that's what I'm saying. So. I I am I've made myself special. I've made myself important, right? That's what and I see. That's, every, that's why I fuck with everybody it. can do that. Bro, I ain't gonna lie. Just hearing you say I made myself special, shit, so powerful. <laughs> everybody can do that because now everybody they can. can. They everybody, no, they can. Everybody so? can it's make a decision. themselves special. It's a decision. I don't think everybody has discipline. No, that that's just part don't of it. Have that's will. part of it. But people can develop discipline or will. You feel me? Hit, you, hit, you don't. Hit, you're not, it's not so, a. It's so not how a. How do you develop? will? You got to get paid. Let me let me just say this. No, look, 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 look. I love this analogy. Paid, patience, attitude, intelligence, discipline. If you work on those, you can get anything you want. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And so if, if anybody want to get paid, they got to first get paid. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Write that down on your wall. If you work on patience, it's going to help you think long term. Most people that's in short term situations don't do anything for their long term existence. So when it gets to that point in time, I ain't do shit every day. Right? So now you live in everything you didn't do. Mm -hmm. Right, but with patience, you plant seeds. Right, person they patient, yeah. they just want to pluck fruits, or they don't even want to pluck the fruit. They just want to goddamn go buy fruit. it, have yeah. it handed, mm -hmm. serve to them on a the platter. Right, you ain't plant no seeds. Yeah. Your attitude is gonna determine people want to be around you and the way you go about life, your mood. And and when you when you are a dutiful person, and I I preach this to people all the time, like plant seeds. And I, I'm cashing checks from two years ago. You know yeah. what I mean? The the you 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 plant it Say in it fertile fertile soil. You cultivate it, and when your crop harvests, it's going to be in the future. You have to be patient for these types of things. That's a fact. You know what I mean? So, but look at your your resolve and your attitude is cold too, though. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Like you, you you got a very relaxed demeanor. You understand me? It's certain people that I meet, I can tell, like, I always try to imagine, how was this person in the streets, though? Right. Right? Because, <laughs> because you, you know it's going to be a different edge, and it's going to be, your temper going to flare much quicker than right. you are at yeah. the point, right, where you add it what right. make you special, right? You know, it's, it's the duality of life, right? L literally, I'm the fabric that holds light and dark, hot and cold, right? Yeah. Because here's the thing, for one to be... When you when you find somebody like this dude is real calm too, right? Yeah. But this dude is an animal. You know what I'm saying? Like I remember watching a video of him doing the um the the hunting for fugitives. They was like, I ain't letting you in. 
He's like, I'm coming in. And he just went in. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Forced his way in with such such refined power. I love that. Ma'am. And open the door, I'm gonna have to boot it. I'm I'm being so nice and, and, and patient. Open so we can have a conversation so we can search. You can have a conversation right there, right? No, we need to search the house. You're a psychiatrist? Huh? Now you're making me feel a certain kind of way. What? If there's anything that you have to talk to me, you talk to me. We are going to search your house. You are making me have an episode. You could just go have an episode. Are you not going to answer? When you have one that is very peaceful, very calm, you know what I'm saying? Think about the minister, very loving, yeah. love. You have the opposite too, you know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not opposing, it's a balance, like a butterfly, like two wings holding that body in place. So you have to have both sides, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. People that's all rah, 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 that's all they got. They say all, all bark, no bite, you know what I mean? So you have to and plus you know you have to be intellectual about everything you do right and be an if, optimist about shit because right. i think some people just get they just get dark on their circumstances yeah. and they stay there like dark yeah it's supposed to prepare you for light you understand and you should me? be like, comfortable in the dark i look at dark as d-a-r-k it's the arc you understand mm -hmm. me it takes you over but some people get stuck in it mm -hmm. so when you live in the arc instead of using the arc to take you across you stuck in that place mm -hmm. and then you live repeatedly of what you got here. So now, you're not using the dark for what it's supposed to do. I just received the download. Talk to me. That you fill your shrooms. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, how'd you get that uh, impression? Because I feel my shrooms. <laughs> 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 oh man, nah, it's dope. How you feel? I feel great, man. Great, right, no, no doubt. This shit over here is, yeah, the station, the All space right. station up there. It's just the wall. Ain't nothing there. Ain't nothing right. happening. Like I had to make sure he wasn't falling in. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> no, I just fuck I'm around. I feel good. Nah. I feel All right. Good. I got questions for y'all. Okay. Right. Yeah, so this is civil mind, savage body. Civilize the mind, makes savage the body. That's what it's. That's what it's about. I believe that that's that should be the disposition of of the the new Renaissance man that we all are. You know what I mean? So. What are your tactics, Bounty Tank, of keeping your mind, you know, civil? Because look, we are essentially beasts, we're animals, right? But the difference is we have a very complex and robust cerebral cortex, a frontal lobe, with billions more neurons than other animals. So we have language, empathy, all of these cool things, right? That that allowed us to create civilization. So how do you, but most people cannot maintain it, right? How do you maintain being a civil minded person? Keeping the mind civilized, man, I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> it's actually deep when you think about it. Because people that don't keep it civilized, they usually tied up in some type of mental institution, they go crazy, depression. So it's a lot that goes into it. I typically move on there's always a cause and reaction to everything. So when I'm moving, I'm out to my day, my daily, every day, just movement. I always remember dealing with people, there's a cause and reaction. This person might come at me crazy. You stay calm, they usually calm down. When you re react with fire with fire, you it's, it's always yeah. it's always some shit, man. I know a lot of times people, they get to yelling and cussing, Rah rah! When you calm on a on a normal level, mm -hmm. they usually catch themselves like, "Damn, I'm the only person sitting here yelling." Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I got, then I feel like I know what they be thinking with you. What's that? After they get tired of yelling and shit, right? And you still standing there like a fucking mountain. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "Yo, this guy fucked me up." You know what I'm saying? Let me chill the fuck out. One episode, bro. I love this shit. Didn't you like? 
the dude was like, I'll scrap you, I'll scrap. Yeah. And you're like, all right, okay, take Just the handcuffs. Yeah. And you're like, nah, I'm cool. I, 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 <laughs> I'm cool, I'm cool. I, I, think, I think it's more intimidating when you talk to somebody in a calm manner, it is, bro. but it they does. feel what you're saying, like, it all is. right, let's do it. And you don't flinch versus is, yeah. yelling. Because I then mean, you gotta take it in logically. Yeah. Right. Like, it's, it's easy to be crazy and not have to think about your decision. But mm-hmm. when a person's speaking to you calm, now you gotta process everything mm-hmm. as far as the, the, the danger you in, what they might do, what you gonna do, the repercussions afterwards, mm-hmm. how you gonna feel. Now your brain processing too much. It's better when your testosterone take over. Yeah. You don't have to think about all it's of no that lo- in a hot no flash of the moment, yeah. especially mm-hmm. if you're not trained. Because mm-hmm. now, like I said, your, 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 your brain just start going to too many places. Then when you can't control a person, by you acting crazy, you can't control them. Yeah. So definitely. it's dangerous when you're like, damn, I can't control, bro. You are right. a dangerous and powerful being when you can control your emotions, mm-hmm. period. Listen, there's a tactic that people should be aware of, right? When you're getting into some kind of confrontation with somebody, and confrontation don't mean a fight, you know, just some kind of verbal confrontation, and you're being, always remain calm because they will try, like, especially if you're right, you know what I mean? They'll, the tactic is to get loud, right? Right, right. So we can yell, so we can, there's no logic, and yeah. whatever happens, you know, you can skate up out of there. But nah, stay calm. They got, what you said, they got to come back down. Mm-hmm. And like you said, they have to start processing it logically. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I and, can't help but to process. So I'm always calm because I got to, I be, my brain can't help but to think about all sides of the right. situation yeah. at all times. So like, me and my older brother's style is different when we get into it. He he know how to fight. He gonna be the person that's go. He gonna throw up all his signs. He go he go he go <laughs> say what he say. He gonna do it before and afterwards. You know afterwards. why he do that though? You, you I know, know why saying? he do that in the beginning. He, it, he don't he he's formidable. He know how to get down, but he don't want to. So he's giving them an opportunity to get out of here. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a warning. It's yeah, like, yeah. Like, right, sure, and, okay. and he gonna roar before and afterward. Yeah. Then he gonna roar during. during. <laughs> right, right, That's right. how he hit me. I'm the type of person like when you go out. We just scrapped, and then I'm walking away calm where people ask me, yo, who fought? And I'm like, I don't know. That's, that's the vibe, Because you can't tell bro. because that is vibe, bro. mine is always <laughs> that chill. That is the vibe, bro. The danger of that sometimes, stories. though, that's real. is that people don't know when they're in danger, right? It's right. like if if a wolf shows his teeth, then you know he could bite. Right. But if a wolf is chilling, then you're like, man, wolf ain't going to show his teeth. He ain't going to bite. True. And so I always say that, you know, a wolf can tell another wolf. Mm-hmm. Right, a sheep can't always tell another wolf. So if a wolf is dressed in sheep's clothing, a, the sheep don't know they're in trouble. They think, mm-hmm. man, I'm dealing with another sheep like me. And so, and, unless that that wolf is like, man, I'm gonna take this shit off because y'all think I'm, mm-hmm. I'm like y'all right. or something. Yeah. Then that person like, oh shit, I done fucked up and, mm-hmm. and started something with I a wolf. Fucked up. But yeah. wolves respect each other way more because they know the level it has to go to once the engagement starts. When wolves, you got when you got that bark. savage they energy, they don't in bark. You. Yeah, no, they don't. When you got that savage energy in you, you sent when somebody else got it. So that's, that's oh, easy yeah, to you, pick 100%, up. One hundred percent. You know, right? right. Yeah. That's why, man. Like that's why it's so weird that like. They be like... Society is changing. Things are changing. Women want to show that we're the masculine ones, which is why we're demasculating the mask. Hey, like, lady, ladies, calm down. <laughs> calm down because there's demons that walk amongst us. Yeah. I'm a demon. I'm a worse demon. I'm a pers- I'm a human with a benevolent uh, uh, energy, but I've been that demon, so I know what they are. Mm-hmm. And I love you so much that I'll be a worse demon to handle them, you know what I'm saying? Or God they, they, in my case. Exactly. Because, so, but that is, what you say is so valid because a woman gonna always expect you to deal with the most dangerous shit if it's y'all too. Mm-hmm. But the type of man that has to be willing, able, and capable to deal with that, you also have to deal with the developmental process of that. Right. Like, baby, I have to hold some darkness if you Correct. want me to deal with darkness. Correct. Mm-hmm. Correct. You understand me? You can't you expect to inter- for me to, with to, your to, to, to be on some square boy lover shit and then you want me to deal with all the things that the top warriors would have to deal with it take like it literally you want you want a person to go from office to lion you understand me like it don't work with, like that i have to be in council with other killers yes you know what i'm saying because they gonna keep you short yeah exactly that's so now nah, that's real <laughs> it's it's a lot it's uh i feel i feel optimistic about the future the next generations to come you know, because it's a lot of good leadership that's that's coming up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just b- brilliant brothers that's 
on their square. You, you know, know who I, mean? I empathize with the most is killers and gangsters a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because society is completely opposed to that being normal, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you really have to douse all your capabilities, how you see the world, how you want respect, how you think things should be ran. Because, you know, the paper has run shit. So it's like, the way you see reality is you see it like a, literally like a lion. Like imagine, you know, when a lion has to be tamed and it be like, now you gotta go in society like this. You can't mm -hmm. just hunt for your food. You can't just take what you right. want because you apex. You gotta go buy it. You might have to go work for a gazelle. Somebody that so, you're stronger than. And then psychologically, it's, it's so many different things. Like there's so many unsolved murders in America. People don't think about that. That's a center of, of the population that has to interact with regular population. Because once you kill, you're not a regular human being at this point in time. You've experienced something that changes your spirit and your soul. So it's like, you know, this world, the more effeminate it becomes, the harder it is for a man to feel like he has a place in it. So mm -hmm. then he has to start doing things like, look at Andrew Tate. Right. They, they carve him out, cut him out, boot him out, a concerted effort around mm -hmm. one man because not of what he said or the, the ladies and all of that, it's because of what he represented. It, they, they felt like he was going to masculize some of them young boys that was looking for a I figure. I don't even think it's that, bro. I believe it. I think they I were the petrified at the fact that he beat the algorithm, he beat the system, and other people can do it. They, don't, they can't have that. I don't think it's that deep to where they really thought that because we all know that you can we could talk to a blue in the face giving yeah, somebody but who some wisdom. Beats the system though, he did exactly. It's, it's it's not just who beats it; it's who beats it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like if you beat the system, it's a problem. Oh yeah, you exactly. understand me. Yeah. But if somebody that goes along with the the common agenda beats the system, mm -hmm. come on into the office, man. Let's mm -hmm. work. You understand me? Mm -hmm. You got to be useful to them. Right. And, that's and right. otherwise, somebody that's you got to get kicked out enough to, yeah, to yeah. somebody that can be you controlled. You can't just become Neo. You got to be yeah. chosen. Right. In they, in they world. Nah, that's real. That's real. But that, bro, that that was really telling, man. Like, I, I, he he did an interview with Valuetainment, I think that's what it's called. Yeah. And I, I, he, I like Brett Show. He said that they, even Uber, like every app got rid of him. They, they put him on that blacklist. <laughs> oh, well, he got blackballed? Yeah, bro. Banks. Wow. Banks in UK. You know what I'm saying? But think about how dangerous that is. They don't even do that to criminals. Yeah. You understand nah. me? They, yeah, yeah. Like, let's, I, say, I, yeah I, let's say he's a misogynist, whatever that means. It, it's not illegal. Like You want to ban me? You know what I'm saying? You, the, the danger is that you don't want them to have that kind of power. Yeah. And you don't want to normalize that because then it'd be like, remember what we did to the Andrew Tate guy? Can we, they can start doing that to other people because the right. rest of the world begged them for it. Get yeah. this guy off. Get this guy off. Yeah. And now, you know, if, if they decide to pull the plug on anybody else, it's like y'all open a Pandora box. Y'all beg for this man that was trending to get right. cut off the internet. Right. You understand me? And not only did we cut him off the internet, we cut him off all other services we control. And the danger in that is like, who controls that? Who can mm -hmm. press that button and decide that play? You understand me? And so for me, it's like, it's the same thing that happened when they cut off the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Alex Jones, and all these mm -hmm. other people, Milo, whether I agree with them or not, I don't want nobody having that kind of power in society. Because nah, when you say the 1% or whoever you believe don't exist, mm -hmm. that's proof that they exist. Mm -hmm. Right, so they, they, they used to kill people like that assassinate you know leaders powerful people people who went against the status quo and mobilize people right but now they kill uh assassinate their character like they did with our father uh honorable minister louis farrakhan not just they, first they assassinated his character and then when social media started getting big like get him off of there you know what i'm saying uh and all the people that came after him that they banned like you said you know it's not I think this time though, that people are very, they see how silly the reason was for them banning this guy. So people are now like, all right, y'all on some dumb shit. Y'all on some mm -hmm. bullshit, you know what I'm saying? And I think it's gonna so, get to a point where people ain't gonna care. Like, <laughs> like banning people for what they say is the most dangerous thing on the planet Earth to me. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Cause, Cause then you playing God. There's nothing mm -hmm. else you doing but playing God. I don't care what's written in a rule, in a constitution, mm -hmm. anything. Nobody should have the power to ban you from society because of words that you speak. Like we all born on the planet Earth. And, and this, we, this to me is the reason why 
the playing field ain't equal is because they get to play God whenever they want to. Yeah. Well, these are people, this is different. This is these alien people. Uh, that's you know what, what I think about. I'm talking about, I, I, I'm talking about. Like, that's what I think about when I think about what, white, white people, and white structure. That's what I don't think mm. about Joe. Like Joe, I, 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 I had said this on my page, like bro, I'm not talking about you. You ain't got no power. Like yeah. don't, don't, don't flatter yeah. yourself yeah. to think mm -hmm. that when I'm talking about right rulership or the white man or supremacy, I'm talking about Joe, Bob, Ethan. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't got no power, y'all in this predicament. It's interesting though, too, the people that were supporting him getting banned. Yeah. People, y'all, everybody out there, y'all, if y'all follow people that is celebrating him getting banned, talking about he's dangerous to young men, y'all need to check y'all leader. You know what I'm saying? Because he's, in if anything, he's empowering young men. If anything, he's saying, yo, I think for myself. Fuck with they, you know, fuck. My biggest enemy is the status quo. But you said something earlier. It's about the, the in that case, your ability to filter information got to be key. Because right. I, 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 I like people who are controversial because they always go have a lot of truth. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's with words is this. What you say is logic. You know, how you say it is the influence, mm -hmm. right? So two people can say the same thing. Right. It's the, the logic of it is solid, it's the same, but how you say Delivery, it. Delivery, right. When you got the ability to deliver certain words to mm -hmm. people in a certain way, that's, a talent. that's when you can move the water. That's what right. Jesus did, Gift he turned tab, water yeah. to wine. Mm -hmm. And they, they don't, that part is dangerous, because yeah. if they don't control you and you got that power, right. then that's when you gotta get kicked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah they wanna control, so people gotta be aware of that, man. People really gotta be aware of that. What is your tactics of maintaining a civil mind? I think being around good people mm -hmm. and isolation, mm -hmm. like I think at this point, I know a lot of people, but I don't allow them to enter my atmosphere anymore. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And, and it's the rhythm of my life. Right. Like I understand that if I'm out giving too much to the world, I'm gonna deplete myself. Correct. I need to get away from the world for a second. Right. I need to be surrounded and, and remind myself of what's my core values. You know what I'm saying? Like. Mm -hmm. Who am I? What am I doing this for? Right. And I gotta constantly do that because the world, I think it was Waka Flocka that said something to me, man. He say, you know, he, he see me moving and stuff. He say, you know, just be careful because they'll try to put you in the clouds and make you forget about the dirt. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And the dirt is the roots of why you're here and mm -hmm. why you're doing it. But you'll be so busy in the clouds, you actually do no work for the roots. Right. So for me, it's constantly grounding myself in my reason. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like reminding me like, Yo, I'm a black Muslim in America, and that's always been my identity as a young guy, growing mm -hmm. up in Oakland, California, seeing myself as a soldier. Right. Before I ever seen myself as anything, I was indoctrinated to the idea I'm a soldier, mm -hmm. and a soldier for a lot, which means I have to be used. Mm -hmm. And then a lot to me represents good. So as long as I'm doing good and being good, I know I'm on that right path, mm -hmm. right? And so. Being around good people, like, you know, we do the the fasting and you sent that message. And like, I talked to other solid people on the phone, only a few to be honest, Right. you understand me? Only a few people and I think that that's key. You can't let everybody into your atmosphere and I don't think all news need to get to me, all issues need 100%. to get to me, none of that. Yeah. Once you get to that ability, especially as a public figure, you gotta shield yourself from mm -hmm. things that should never even get to you. Gotta protect your energy. And you yeah. should have people in front of that. Mm -hmm. So. You know, but I don't think it's nothing more important than just being grounded in a route that I'm doing it for. Do you I, don't think, I don't think people understand when you're a public figure how important it is to have a solid circle, man. Yeah, I mean, day. your circle is pretty much gonna determine whether you fail or prosper, man. So, yeah. like, I, I crave to be around like-minded people, ambitious people, which I come out, I hit you up all the time, man. It's just, mm -hmm. you crave for it, man. If you, or some type of public figure, and your circle isn't right, you gotta really yeah. switch that shit around ASAP, man, because that's that's gonna that's gonna make or break you. Period. I I bro, I I am a very fortunate person to have friends like both of y'all, like real shit, and other other people that's in my life. And it's funny because sometimes I think about like there's a, like how you show yourself. I do the same mm -hmm. thing. And there's people, I know a lot of fucking people. Right. So many people, right? So you have the, that inner circle and then you have everything else outside of that that's not in your solar system. And they keep trying to bounce in. They bounce off of, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they can't get in. And I'm not nice to them. I'm like, why people, why do I got friends? You know what I'm saying? But 
that energy never goes to people I care about that yeah. I love. And it's funny because in certain times I'm being interviewed or I'm with a guest and they're like, they're just giving me so much like, like, like respect and props. And I'm like, especially like, you're such a humble, good person. I'm like, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, not. I said, I'm only good to people that I love. You know what I'm saying? I'm only good to people that I love. And I look, listen, I take, I evaluate myself. Mm -hmm. I take inventory of the things of my life and the people in my life and you know how I am. And I am so okay with how I am, right? And I am not, I am not a, a benevolent person to most people. Mm -hmm. I don't care about most people. Now, I'm not saying that I ever do anything bad to anybody, because I don't. And when I was the last time you slapped somebody, Mike? You know what? I was talking to my girl yesterday, bro, <laughs> and I was like, I never slapped somebody I don't want to. I know that sounds uh, bad. I don't want to slap nobody? I never slapped anybody. You know, it's good. funny because when I, when I got the idea to slap somebody, it was years ago, it was when I was ascending out of that kind of behavior, uh, you know what I'm saying? So I would, I don't want to slap anybody. I get what you But if saying. I ever have the opportunity, if I'm ever in this situation to where that somebody somebody uh, Defensive deserves slap. a slap, right. I'm doing it. So let me let me ask y'all, as just being around two successful black men, um, just on the road to success, do you feel like it's a road that's lonely? You feel like how you talk about how you isolate yourself from everybody do you do you guys feel lonely sometimes like you just feel like you're just by yourself does it cause depression for y'all because you always gotta stay up one you always gotta mm -hmm. keep the content going you always gotta keep moving not everybody checks on you because you the big dog you know what i'm saying listen the listen. shit bounty tank me. bounty tank it is lonely yeah but that's a beautiful thing that's mandatory it's necessary if we can't walk alone in the darkness we're not fit for any type of leadership position you know what i mean and listen i have emotions like everybody else but i check myself you know what i mean so and i've had i've dealt with these extreme emotions like mm -hmm. around like when i had major legal issues you know what i'm saying so but i had to check myself because i'm not succumbing to this for one and for two i see i see what's coming after this when i was uh when they when the u.s marshals came and got me right Mm -hmm. First of all, when I first went on a run years ago, my, my mother, my stepmother, I love her so much. She's like one of the dopest people I know. She's an angel, literally. She said, listen, baby, I know you got to do what you got to do. But when they catch you, it'll, it'll be worse. I said, I, I've, I've thought that through and I'm, I'm good with that. You know what I'm saying? So that was in my head. You know what I'm saying? And everything looked worse. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? When they got me. But what did I do when I got out of jail? I had a big ass ankle bracelet like this big. It was a GPS, like they knew every move. And it was metal, so it dug in my skin. What did I do? I just started wearing like pants to cover it and boots. And I still did my YouTube videos, still took clients here and there, still stayed positive. Not once did I complain about anything, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So that 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 lonely, that fuck, extreme loneliness, dark clouds so, and all of that. So shit. how do you decompress? Who do you, how do you release? Cause everybody gotta release at some point. I meditate. Meditate? I meditate. I meditate, that's, that is my medication. Okay. You feel me? What, what about you, KZ, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, I do that, but I feel like talking to the people is my release. You know what gotcha. I'm saying? Like, to be honest, intellectually, like, it, it, you know, like even creating this show, High Level Conversations, was my way of having conversations that intellectually stimulate me. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Otherwise, you got all these different sides of yourself that you don't get to exercise because it doesn't fit into the movement right now because that's not what's gonna be the most efficient. Mm -hmm. So it took me a long time to get to a point where it's like, all right, now, not only can you be intellectually stimulated with things that you're interested in, but it's actually effective as well, because now you can create a show out of it, it's profitable, now you can add it into your ecosystem. So for me, it's like, of course the team, I got a lot of brothers and sisters, and we just now being able to work together more closely. Like, So I've been through the years of loneliness, but I feel like where I'm at now, with the team, my girl, my family, I think that we getting tighter. As far as understanding specifically what it's like to be in my position, 
No, but I don't have any expectations, mm. right? I feel like when you have expectations of being understood, it feels more lonely when somebody's not there. I don't think it's nobody supposed to be there. Mm. You understand me? Because I feel like the circumstances in life that I live was so rare that I don't think it's nobody that can come in and be like, yo, I understand. Like, it was, right. like if you know, I don't talk yeah. about my story a lot, that's but it was fine, very though. rare. That's fine. You know, yeah. I feel you. I feel the same way. And even on a, a lower level when people don't understand, like say a piece of content that I put out, I'm like, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? As long as the right ones do, right? Mm -hmm. Because to not understand me, especially something that I'm putting out for you, because mm -hmm. you said something earlier that, you know, resonates with me as well. I'm a servant, you know? My name is Abdul Rashid, right? ABD means a, a slave of God, of Allah, right? I am a servant to goodness, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when I'm putting out content, it's something, it's food for your soul. It's information that will help you. Mm -hmm. Now, for you to 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 ne, 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 uh, reject it, you're trying your hardest. There's a guy that just did a video, bro, like an hour, hour long video, um, calling me every kind of coon, every kind of sandbo, you know what I'm saying? And he don't even know, he don't even know that I have every piece of information on him because I'm a resourceful person, right? So he went, you know, and then people, so he did a review, right? And then this cat, Hotep Jesus, he did, no, a guy named Hotep Uncle, or Uncle Hotep, it's pretty funny, he did a, a review of the review, and then Hotel Jesus, a review of the review, of the review, whatever, it's like Inception. But the first guy that did the review was like with the, that guy at first. He thought that I was some easy target, right? Big, strong idiot. But he was like, what is this guy talking about? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The right people get it, right? And this person, it wasn't that he didn't get it, he got it, but he wanted to like negate it for a couple reasons. One, for like clickbait shit, for clout, you know what I'm saying? Cause that is a tactic that people who have nothing to offer participate in, you know what I'm saying? I think that's just silly. Uh, if somebody's saying shit I don't like, I just ignore them, you know what I'm saying? Or I have a conversation with them if it's that important, you know what I mean? But, uh, <clears throat> so, <laughs> this video was like, I, I, watched the, I watched the final video with all three of their reviews and they got every point that I made, you know what I'm saying? And they was like trying to take score and it was like 100% over here, mm -hmm. you feel me? So for a person that don't get it, don't understand shit that I'm putting out there, information for people, they're trying not to, or they're trying to like talk over it, like that tactic I was talking about earlier, not being calm, mm -hmm. because not being calm is not just about the tone of your voice, you know what I'm saying? Just like being violent is not always physical. It, it could be with words, it could be, you know, with intentions, putting something out with intent, that's violent, you know what I mean? So, you know, I don't worry about that shit because yeah. I've been I've been thrown under the bus, like people try to throw me under the bus with all kind of shit before. When the dust settles, I'm always here and they're never there. You no, that, I mean? That's key what you said, you know, like, your name, I resonated with that. But I remember thinking back in the day, my name mean, my name is Jabril, so it means strength from God. So mm -hmm. I remember thinking like, you know, my parents intentionally programmed us with names to grow into. So I used to think about like, where do I get my strength from? You know what I'm saying? Because when you got those days and it's nobody pushing you, mm -hmm. there's nobody else around you, there's nobody relating to it, but you feel just as normal as if you got a team. And I believe that my strength always did come from God though. Like. Mm -hmm. That's always been my source. Like if I ever feel out of whack, like God don't like what I'm doing, then that's when I feel like issue. Cause mm -hmm. I feel like I'm alone in what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You understand me? But when I feel like I'm in tune with a lot, and it's like, and that's always if I'm doing good, then I'm like, all right, I'm solid. But you know, it's that shadow self where it's right. like, as Honorable Minister Louis Farr kind of say, you are who you are alone yeah. by yourself. 100%. So if, if I love myself and I, if I look at the things I'm doing by myself and I'm be like, all right, you solid, you good, I yeah. like what you're doing. Yeah. You, you, you still following those rules. Nobody here to watch you, nobody here. And it ain't about perfection, but it's about correction and like striving. So if I catch myself and it's like, yo, all right, you actually wanna do better in that area, that makes you good, because right. you don't have to. 
Right. You understand me? And that's what I respect. I think perfection is a state of existence, like that it's a state. You can only be in it for so long. Then, but for me, greatness is motion. You understand me? As you mm -hmm. move about and you can do things greatly. So I don't worry about perfection, but I respect myself when I go for correction and I strive, especially when I don't have to. And the only reason I want to is because I can be more aligned and appreciated by Allah. Right. That's a good action because a lot of people don't have that to be able to be honest with themselves. It's hard to be honest with nah, yourself. It's not, but it's man, it's necessary. It's my favorite. So, so nice. what? What is it? What about you? For that same question, what do you do? Do you feel lonely, and how do you deal with that? I do, um, and I think I put it back into work. I suck with balance. I'm trying to find that 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 medium where I can be. And I think entrepreneurship comes with with demons too, man, because you never. You always want more. You're mm. never satisfied, at least for me. I'm never right. fucking satisfied. No. I always want to get more. I always want to work. I can't put my phone down. It's addictive. And I don't know, it's something that I'm working on, you know. Um, brings, actually, don't, you know, brings why? problem in the house. Did, did, I mean, because I'm never home. I'm not mentally there. A lot okay. of times I'm mentally, I might be physically there, but I'm not mentally home. You know what I'm saying? So mm. my mind's always on, what's the next move? How can I do this? With, with, with content to create, so I don't know how to. That's an easy fix. Separate shit. What's the what's the fix? Just love that? on that woman more. You know what I'm saying? That's your queen. You feel me? Yeah. Spoil the hell out of her. You it sounds easy, but it is easy. It is energy. easy because you you masculine. Yeah. Right. Masculine needs feminine to balance. There ain't mm -hmm. no ma masculine man on the world that's go find balance without feminine energy. The energy can be nature. It could be meditation. It could be art it has to flow in some way. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And a woman is all about how she feel, a man is about what he thinks. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And so that that woman is a place where she can absorb a lot of that and she can nurture and get that mm -hmm. back to you. She gonna help that energy flow within you without mm -hmm. you having to be in the mood, the world doing something. Bro, I'm a, I'm a brute. I'm a caveman, you know what I'm saying? Like, I go out in the world and I'm like, I fight other people's shit. I want to, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I have, People look at me as like, he don't need shit, right? And I typically don't. But I like laying my head in my woman's lap. Like, I get, it's just like my mother makes me feel like safe. You know what I'm saying? Comfort, it is. That's yeah. the power source. A mm -hmm. woman is a man's power source. Nurture. Mm -hmm. The nurture from a, from a woman. So, you know, like even tonight, I can't wait to take my girl out on a date. Yeah. You feel me? Like, I cannot wait. We all gonna hang out. You know what I'm saying? So, but like, I, one of the homies, look, look, one of the homies was like, I was like, yo, Bring the wifey out. Da, da, da. He said, "Man, we could just do stuff too." I like, nah, oh, I'm good. Man. I'm good. Look, I'm with my bros when that, when I'm I working. I think that's that's you know probably that? probably one of the worst parts of where we at today is that just that the way you you society you know growing up hip hop music movies entertainment treat the woman. You yeah. understand me? It's yeah. like discard her, nah. treat her as just a body. Mm -mm. Don't talk to her. Don't express yourself to her. So it's, it's like you got the greatest helper in the world, but you never ask her for help. Right. You understand me? Like she's made to help nurture and like flow those things through you. So, but so she also got to be trained in that, that act of femininity. So too. your your foundation right now, because obviously you have a foundation on how you treat women. Did, was your father around? Um, <laughs> you, you know, my pops was in and out. Okay. You understand me? My pops is crazy, man. Shout out to pops. Uh, Pops is dope. Pops grew up, man. He grew up in Alton where he didn't have a father, mm -hmm. right? Uh, he didn't know his father at all, right? And he grew up in Illinois where he was street gangster, like revolutionary, like the shit that mm -hmm. they did back in the day. He'd be glad there's no cell phones. <laughs> you understand me? <laughs> and now you, 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 you know, ever since I knew him, he was the epitome of masculinity because mm -hmm. he was respected by all the men. It was always these urban legends around him. The whole nine, but yeah, Pops, he would do hiatuses sometime. Him mm -hmm. and my mother didn't have the best relationship. And I never talk about this at all mm -hmm. because a lot of people just assume like the household was just a two parent great household, grew up in a Muslim culture and it was perfect. But it's actually quite far from it. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And so this is why I empathize with so many people because I've experienced early on what that was like, but then I seen the transition of them going through they break up and they separation right. and how toxic that was at right. certain points of period of time. And then times wondering like, damn, where the hell is Pops? And having zero communication, mm. right? And then I got an older brother. Older brother grew up like me, but more 
prone to the streets and, and his character you know is more involved in the identity of what's value in the streets right but we all grew up with this god mentality so i feel like this is why i'm saying about my circumstances being rare i feel blessed because i feel like i was able to get a perspective on everything i was going through learning from everybody's situation looking at my pops looking at my brother looking at them as people mm -hmm. not even as family like mm -hmm. once i was able to look at my father as a man I can understand him. That's why I get a background of him not having his father and things mm -hmm. he went through. Right. So do right. you do you feel like your brother helped you kind of navigate just kind of dealing with women at that early age? Because you know you know the foundation of men, especially black men. You know, I, and I'm not gonna say especially, but I'm gonna speak for me because I grew yeah. up. You know, if you ain't fucking that when you're young, you lame. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. you a virgin, you lame. So yeah. you try to fit into that stereotype <laughs> so that you could be fucking popular. Then. Psh, fucking five, ten years down the road, that shit becomes embedded in you. Right. And that's all you fucking know. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, how, when did you realize, how did you, what was the turning point where you was just like, alright, this ain't how it's supposed to be. I know it's embedded. Yeah. Let me I switch mean, this shit around. My, my brother gang, I'm from Oakland. Okay. You understand me? Being from Oakland, you gonna get the game. Right. You did. But I feel like the way my older brother gave me the game was very gorilla. Mm -hmm. You understand me? He was like, yo, talk to her, I'm gonna beat your ass. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he was the most debonair, smooth gangster I ever knew in life. He can put on the dirtiest clothes and go talk to the most beautiful woman and get her. Mm -hmm. And he just taught me lessons about women. But those lessons didn't allow me to really appreciate their feminist energy. You understand me? It was, you get a woman for a notch on your belt or just to use them. Mm -hmm. That is a process as an adult that I had to go through. Because I thought I loved and appreciated women, then I had to realize, like, I remember listening to conversations about women talk about, you know, male privilege, and I'm like, man, that shit don't exist. Like, what is y'all talking about? But the more I, when I started listening to understand, it gave me a different perspective. Because mm -hmm. then I was able to see the world from their perspective. Gotcha. Then, being reinforced by, like, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the way he talks about women, I can't say I listen to this man and I follow the teachings but the teachings talk about the women in this way. And I can't say that's my relationship with them. Right. And so, you know, I, I, I got the dichotomy of all, and now I'm at this transition point in life where it's like, no, nah, I only wanna treat women good. Right. I, I, and, and that's for my shadow self, not for the world. Like, I don't want none of that karma of breaking the heart and having that energy come back on me. Like, I feel that deeply, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Same thing as like doing criminal acts in the street. I don't wanna rob nobody or do something to get somebody and that energy come back on to you. Mm -hmm. So a lot of cats make that transition because they understand the karma of the streets, but they don't make that transition because they don't understand the karma of doing a woman wrong. Yeah, it's so like, yeah. That's something that I had to learn on my own, and that just came from appreciating masculine and feminine energy mm -hmm. and what that meant to me. So I, I, that's why I empathize. I'm never looking at somebody. That's why I don't judge people. It's like, bro, I'd have been through all of the different layers of dimensions on how you can feel and think about yourself and the positions you can be in. And it's like, damn, I can't judge them because I was once in that position. And it took m the time that it took me to get over that. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna take them that time and that intention and that will to get over that as it's, well. It's a process. You but you, it, you gotta want to though, otherwise yeah. it'll never happen. So, so let me ask, do you feel like it's a spirit? Yeah. It's over men? I think that it's a spirit over the world right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think that this generation probably gonna treat women better. Um, but also women, I think it's, a lot of onus is gonna be on them as well on how they perceive men and mm -hmm. what a man is. Cause this generation of women have learned the art of manipulation so tough. The previous generation of men learned the art of manipulation, mm -hmm. right? So they knew what to attract to a woman, how to sell her a dream, how to get into her pants, things of that nature, what to show up, what she gonna want. The women learned that same exact game and they've been running it on men, right? I, I can go buy a ass and get more opportunities in a man's world. Right. You understand me? I can put it at a certain angle. I can say certain things. So they learn the art of pimping, but uh, uh, but they ain't really learn the art of femininity. So they don't really respect who a man is, they respect what he has. So a man said, well shit, you respect what I got, let me go get it, and I'm gonna respect what you got, but that don't mean I respect you. So now we got such an external world, right, where each person is looking at each other for what they got on the outside, and ain't nobody worried about what's on the inside. Character. So do you think it's more, so you know, today's I don't know if I don't want to seclude it in just one city, isolated in one city. It might be a global thing. How 
shit's trans. It's, women take care of guys. Yeah, nah, that's crazy. shit then kind of <clears throat> transition a little bit. Yeah. A lot of the guys are just sitting around, women working, they just sitting around well, the house doing I think that's a problem that, that is a sum total of fathers not being fathers. You know what I mean? But I, it seems like some of the women are all right with that because they got the control. They're not all right with that, bro. You know, they, they've they accepted it. Mm-hmm. They Listen, you got to understand, people, listen, people, there's people that live in under the freeway and they're fine with that. You know what I'm saying? People adapt to whatever their situation is. Mm-hmm. But they're not happy with that. A woman is not, I'm not saying that all women, but 99.99% of so women. by nature, that's, 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 that's not. Po- that's no, not. no by nature. take care of you, you become her child. Mm-hmm. Listen. That's no, how I don't believe This is, this is really. Far yeah. you are, you, and I believe that. And you, a, you, and you a motherfucker because you fucking your yeah. mother. And she gonna love you, <laughs> you know as a child. <laughs> yeah. You not her king, but you her prince. If yeah, a woman takes care of you, you, you are her prince. So, so what, what message do y'all have to the fellas out here just living under women? Is lame. It's fucking lame. It's lame. It's lame. You, it, so listen, it, it, you can't be a man living under a woman. Right. Being a man is you're not your living. way of thinking. You're not living. It's a rite of passage, right? So I always break down man at man age. Your ability to manage yourself. Mm-hmm. You can't manage your income, your housing, how to feed yourself, how to move in the world. You've never developed to that man age, right? And so when you need a woman to take care of you, that's when you a child because that's what your mama did. Mm-hmm. You understand me? So a lot of men take that mama's boy mentality and then they find a woman that can replace their mama. You understand me? And without having their father, they never got an example of what it's like to have a man in a household so this, they don't know how to be a man in the house. So, I got so some, Jan, I got, let me, let me Go add on to that. This make men great. If men can adopt this mentality, you don't deserve a woman just because you're a guy. Mm. You know what I mean? You deserve well, a woman. Some heat on that. You, you deserve a woman when you can take care of her mentally physically spiritually financially you know what i mean so wait like because cats be like you said out the gate we trying to like oh i got pussy or whatever like listen fuck all of that that shit ain't cool mm-hmm. develop yourself build your foundation learn work out develop the qualities that when you're a man and when you're a man of, of a certain age that people respect that you can because listen fellas <laughs> You can have, if you apply yourself properly, the younger you are. When you're ready, and when you're ready, you have all of these qualities that you're a leader, you know you are important to your community, to your ecosystem. You can have any woman you want easily. You, you, you. And, and multitudes too, as long as you're honest, right? So men need to, men need to understand like you, you don't deserve a woman just because you're a guy. Do you see this more relevant in the street culture? Excuse me? So do you see this more relevant, this type of living in the street culture? Because obviously, y'all live out here, it's a different different lifestyle, different mm-hmm. world. Where I'm at and what I'm dealing with every single day, all I see is the women bailing out their they, they boyfriends, the guys don't work. This is all that I see. This is like the culture. But you also dealing with a low, you're not of that, of course, because you, you have a business to run. Mm-hmm. But the the patrons of your business are a low level, but the it, lower level of society. It keeps me tapped in with the community of what's yeah. going on. It keeps me relevant, and it seems yeah. like it's really fucking relevant so, within our community. Guys not working, and females just taking care of the household. It's it's the same thing on all levels to me because look at what the woman is doing. The dynamics is the same regardless of what you do, as far as what men and women are doing. Mm-hmm. The woman is nurturing that man. Right. If you nurture a child, you 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 taking care of that child. You helping it grow. You sustaining this life. You managing it. It's a difference if a woman is nurturing a man. Right. She's nurturing his business. She's nur- helping nurture his vision. She's helping him grow and become fruitful. Mm-hmm. You understand me and multiply the things that she have. If a woman role go always be the same. She gonna help you multiply. Mm-hmm. Right. But if you have nothing, then she have nothing to multiply. Mm-hmm. So she has to keep bailing them out because. What he's producing is nothing. You understand me? She so multiplies she's problems. nurturing a child. But when she nurtures a man, that same woman, now he producing more. Instead of bringing you out of jail, she want to give you peace because your problems is different. You understand me? Now she's trying to bail you out of a headache because you overthinking or she's trying to bail you out of a situation where you don't know, should I take this million dollar deal or not? Should I deal with this product or not? It changes what she has to do, but it's the same thing. Mm. So it's like in the streets, yeah, nurturing a street nigga is gonna be different between nurturing a man. Mm-hmm. 
You understand me? And, and, and that qualification is different because a lot of women want a street nigga wrapped in a man. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you can't get that. You gotta choose. That's the straddling the fence. It's like a street cat wanting to be out the streets but still kind of on the fence of doing mm -hmm. shit, didn't get caught up. That's kind of what we was talking about earlier, that edge. Yeah. They want that edge. Yeah. I mean, there's other ways to develop or maintain an edge oh, yeah. for a man. You can have so. swag doing all type of jobs. I, I was listening to your interview uh, with no podcast, and you, you said some shit that I thought was dope. You was talking about how when women think of truck drivers, yeah. they think of this fat, sloppy shit. <laughs> yeah. And you just like, no, nah, bro, you just need a fucking industry makeover. So That's I was fact. like, hell yeah, because when people think of Bonnie Hunt, they look at me, oh, it's, it's fresh. Yeah. It's, it's, it, you make it popping, you make it cool, and you're right, it just depends on who's the face of that fucking market, right. man. Look at what we sold. We sold suits as far as success, because we was uh, taught to channel white man energy. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, coming out of early, you got the 20s, 30s, we, we used to throw debutante balls as black people. We used to we used to put that on. We used to get fly, yeah, yeah. right? But even that, we had to take from the textile industry of Europeans and, and, and white Americans on how they dress, and so we had to fit into common society on what looked civilized. Then we got to the 70s, right? Psychedelic era. A uh, 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 post that you had the 60s, it was more militant. Bruh's mm -hmm. coming out the Civil War, that influence of military style, because mm -hmm. those were the top gangsters for real, because mm -hmm. they was the ones more organized. They came out taking over the streets. So you got to look at the influence through every era on how men dressed. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And in this era, right, of 2022, who has the most influence? Homosexuals got more influence than the street guys That's over true. the fashion industry, That's over true. the military, over the industry. Yeah. But now you get this choice to decide how you present yourself. Mm. You understand me, what you wear. You get to completely make over whatever you do. You don't have to look in the past and be like, this is what an activist look like, this is how I'm aware. This is what a truck mm. driver look like, this is what a computer analyst, whatever it is. All of the crypto guys start looking like rappers after a while. You understand me? Because they like, we don't want to look like crypto guys. We want to have crypto got money. Yeah. But we yeah. want to have a rapper's lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So it's like, when you picking a woman, she don't want to be with a truck driver. She want to be with a good man. Mm -hmm. She want to be with a man that can provide a lifestyle based on what you can afford. Mm -hmm. So if you got, you making $200,000 a year, it's not that you got to come outside looking like you're a rapper, but present yourself looking like you go be somebody to create a life with. You still gotta market yourself. You gotta market yeah, yourself, yeah, cause you yeah. selling that. Yeah, you selling yourself. Yeah. Otherwise you like, people otherwise gotta, you selling yourself short. People gotta live, <laughs> People, a lot of people unfortunately, they don't really live, they just exist. Nah. They just on the hamster wheel. People gotta really live, but listen, fellas, I appreciate y'all. Okay. Big oh, yeah. yeah. time, you know, we gonna wrap it up, cause we got food outside, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I just wanna see but, on that truck driver stuff. When you look at a woman, you don't even know what she do. Right. You know what I'm saying? A woman, dope, boy, man. she could show up it looking like a goddess, but she could be driving a truck and you'll never know. Or working a woman at Wendy's. will never take her profession and present that to the world. She could be a goddamn mail deliverer, she could be a police officer, but when you see her out and she's looking for a partner, mm -hmm. she looks sexy, she look attractive. And a lot of men, like you say, you gotta learn how to sell yourself and market yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference between men and women. A lot of women are more cognitive of that mm -hmm. because they understand yeah, sure. that the field is different yeah. that you gotta play in. And, and also, fellas, like, I'm I'm not a person that get dressed up, that try to be all super fashionable, right? But I'm in shape. <laughs> I don't have to, you know what I mean? You gotta understand, lean on your strengths and your weaknesses. Oh, or, no, I think or, you're or pretty your fashionable, God. <laughs> Man, got the, got I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, Mike, I shape, think you're pretty fashionable. With the, with the what, I'm very okay. basic, with very basic glasses. Shirt on. <laughs> Bro, I wear a uniform. <laughs> Whenever you see me out, it's a, a uniform, black on black on black. This is black the boots. new truck driver yeah. aesthetic yeah. right here. You understand me? I've never driven a truck in my life, but <laughs> But I'm saying, sure. this, this, this yeah, imagine if this is what truck drivers look like. Why not? You did? Why not? You know. But hold on, that, you should help me. Shout out to my bro, Alex. Good energy. Let's put big, together the big truck. Big shout to Alex. Let's let's put together the truck the truck fit. Truck fit, baby. Truck fit. It's a wrap. It's done. You feel me? It's done. We released the the, the nutrition plan and have. <laughs> man, I'm telling you, that's listen, such a raw listen, ass industry because I listen. know they help. Suck. Untap. I wanna industry. I wanna yeah. touch on one thing before we get up out of here. I was telling my son this the other day, and I I just came into realization that day that. You know, we're no different than a computer, but we are very different because we have a mind, a soul, you know, consciousness, right? So, and I'm telling him like about programming, right? Mm -hmm. 
how an engineer will program a computer to do whatever it wants to do. Because, you know, I do see civilization getting to that at some point to where shit, you don't know what's organically oh, real or not. It's right? close right there now. Nah, for sure. So I told them, I said, I started telling them, I said, everything in the computer is in us, right? Because this is a computer, a phone. So look at the ingredients of a computer uh, or a phone the copper, the tungsten, all of this stuff, right? I said, that's in a human. He says, no, it's not. I said, Google it. It's literally all in. I knew it was. That's why I challenged him to do that, right? And I said, we're a computer, but we program ourselves. That's why I say I'm a God. You're God. You're God. You're not my God. You're your God, right? Because I'm programming everything about me every day, right? I'm the engineer. So the coding, you know, how intelligent I am determines how much I read, hmm. how many intellectual conversations that I have, how much gray matter I'm forming, me meditating or whatever. How strong I am depending on me going to the gym or mm -hmm. whatever I gotta do for that. It's literally every, I want them to, to understand this. Everything you do, you're programming yourself every day. Your destiny is literally your decisions, right? You get hit by a bus. If you choose to run in front of the bus, you get hit by a bus. It's his time to go. Like he decided to run in front of the bus. You know what I'm saying? So life is a lot simpler than what people make it out to be. We make it complex by just doing dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? But it's still simple. You made a dumb decision, you know? So the more people can understand that, that we are our own programmers and coders, I think people will have better lives, more meaningful and fun lives. When you break it down like that, it is pretty simple. But I think the one thing get in the way, which is that human emotion element. But it's yeah, a decision. You break it down, yeah, listen, it's still listen, a decision. Listen, it can it's, get it's, in the way or it can be used as fuel because correct. emotion is passion. Correct. Mm -hmm. So if you push it in a direction towards the things you want, it's fuel, it's rocket fuel. 100%. So like what you said with the programming language, I am, it's like you put www, and then you put anything in there, dot com, it's gonna take you there. Mm. For a human being, programming language is, the www is I am. Correct. So whatever you say after that, that's where it takes You're you, and right. that's what you mm. become. Correct. You understand me? So you're 100% right with that programming. Yeah. And yeah. then if you add emotion to that, if like brain, heart, and gut all align, mm. you solid. It's the same thing, we just think that emotion and logic don't go hand in hand, it mm -hmm. do. When you find a passionate person that's convinced that Correct. what they believe, they will achieve that shit. Correct. Because their emotions is in it. Correct, but we have to intellectually rise above just the emotion. And you know, we have to control ourselves. A good way people could do that, it, meditation. You know, I, I, I talk this so much. Meditation and what you were saying, discipline. You know, we, we fast, every. you should join us every Wednesday, 24 hour fast, it's easy. Right? It's a lot of incredible physiological benefits to it, but fuck all that. It's the the controlling yourself. Being disciplined enough to, to mm -hmm. you know, I'm not gonna eat today. You know, mm -hmm. you ain't gonna die. It's actually you're, you're good for every you. Every Wednesday? Yeah. Every Wednesday. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do it. That, I'm that, do it. You, you down? I, I swear, I got, I got right, it. That's yeah. what's up. I, so, need, I need something new, some some structure. Yeah, bro. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. so you. you know, that's more programming. That's how you get disciplined choose something to be disciplined about, you know what I'm saying? So, but I also, also this, write discipline on your mirror in the bathroom, you know what I'm saying? I am disciplined. Mm -hmm. Remind yourself that, you know, and even if you're not yet, you're gonna be making a step towards that. It's, af it's an affirmation, yeah. that shit you is know, real. I always say take it, write on a piece of paper, put it in your pocket and carry it with you every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That too. Like yeah. every day. It's you something powerful about writing shit down, bro. You know what? I don't even want to. I don't want to further it. I'm just gonna laugh for it. I had a. I had gave a breakdown about that. You know when you catch one of them flows. Yeah. And I was just talking about how society misspells, mm -hmm. right? Like we got autocorrect. We we don't even know how to right. spell anymore. Right. So we accidentally do misfunctions of things, not even realize it because when you spell something, it's intention, mm -hmm. right? So like when you write something, you have to spell it right. Right, so. but we live in society where we don't even write cursive no more. Yeah, we barely yeah. write letters. Yeah. We got phones. These are our second brains. They call them phones, but that's a right. small percentage of what it does. Yeah. which is why people misuse drive. them. Yeah. yeah, but it auto corrects anytime you messing up. Mm. So when you got that second brain, you always having somebody assist you. And we got a society that's constantly misspelling, and they don't know how to create unless they get auto corrected. Unless somebody comes help them. 
but that autonomy is what's missing in society today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind people, of crutch. You super crutch. It, it, Think about how many, how many numbers you remember offhand. None. Me. I don't even I'd try. be fucked if I lost. My Only one I know. Everybody in the world knows is nine one one. I was just on the plane. I, I got multiple I, phone. I don't know all my phone numbers. I was just on the plane. My wife like, what's your number? I can't eat this. It's fucking terrible, man. Yeah. Right. But 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 here's the thing, though. I will say this. I, I give a lot of credit to human ingenuity. Like we developed these phones, so we freed up space from having Second to remember brands. so much yeah. to do other things you yeah. know what i'm saying so it's tapping into that super mind yeah that super mind so Get into it. so like they they did a study on these there's a sanctuary for chimpanzees in japan and this guy he just look, he's passionate about chimps right <laughs> so he does all of these studies he's a scientist and you can go you can go visit the sanctuary and you can do a test like a you know are you smarter than this chimp mm-hmm. or is your memory better than the chimp you know, these chimpanzees memories are superior literally superior to ours right but here's the thing we don't need a superior memorization uh, component in our brain because we can write and we could talk they can't they gotta remember everything you know what i'm saying so so everything you know the that's what's beautiful about the human body and the brain it, it makes it just want to work efficiently and perfectly you know what i'm saying even when we we treat it so bad and it's still trying to work for us. You know what I'm saying? That's why we gotta treat our bodies good, do good things to our body, exercise, should keep you young. You know what I'm saying? Read, to keep your brain young and strong and powerful. Our bodies want that. It rewards us for that, those things. You know what I mean? So, yo, we about to get up out of here, but, yeah. but treat yourselves good, treat your body good because man, y'all be running y'all shit down. It ain't gonna be there forever. All right? We about here, peace.